<laughs> Greetings, everyone, <laughs> and welcome to an Anna Make You Very Upset edition <laughs> of Monster Party. Monster, Monster Party! Party. Monster, Monster, Party. Party. Monster Party! Monster Party! Oh, it's, 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 it's animated! It's, it's a pencil test! It's, it's sure. Do, 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 That's how you get there. Do, 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 do. Crazy music. Oh it's, my uh, gosh. Crazy sound effects. Friz freeling. And oh my gosh. <laughs> freeling <laughs> clam. <laughs> Oh, the Hair Bear Bunch. Oh, oh my God. And speaking of Hair Bears, who are you, sir? <laughs> Once again, I will accept <laughs> that description. I am Matt Weinhold. I am Sean Sheridan. I am Larry Stroth. And I'm James Gonis. And for this episode, wow. Woo. We've, you know what? We've, we've kind of dabbled in this neighborhood. Yeah, we yeah. have. Yeah. We have mm-hmm. talked about these kind of things. But we have never done an episode where we really just zoomed in on one aspect of animation. Exclusively, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. And so the topic for this episode is (gasps) controversial cartoons. Controversial cartoons! Oh, it's it's causing problems. It could be, yes. Shaking (laughs) things up. Or perceived problems. You can't show that on TV. Right. Or or you showed it on TV, and now we're upset with you. Yeah, right. exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah. But you know, Matt, Matt, the, the thing is, this is such an exciting topic, but to do this topic, we really need an expert, someone who knows about controversial dude. cartoons. Dude, dude, I got the guy, man. <laughs> do oh, you? Yeah. Yeah. Do you? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I got Fill the goods. In. I got the goods. Our guest for this episode is a brilliant producer, director, and actor who also happens to be quite a swinging stand-up bass player. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You cats heard me. Yeah, yeah. He was the VP of animation at MTV during the 90s and oh. produced and developed such iconic projects as Beavis and Butthead. Yes. I've heard of that. Get oh. out. Uh-huh. Daria. Uh-huh. <gasps> oh. Right. Oh. Aeon Flux. Oh, oh, my, oh, one of my oh I love that. Ooh, love that. Personal favorite. The Max. Remember the Max? Love the Max. Oh, yeah. And uh, The Head. The head, yeah. <laughs> yes, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, he's a longtime friend of mine, and we worked on some stuff together when he was at Plasky Chupo. He's done a bunch of other stuff that we'll force him to talk about, but please <laughs> welcome to our show, John Andrews. John Andrews! Hey! Welcome. Hi. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank John, you we are, we are, we, John, we are <laughs> thrilled to have you, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I like honestly. the way he came in. Hi. Now, now is this an uh, is this an audio only, by the way, podcast? It is audio only. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I don't. Have We're going to gonna I, save the the visual for <laughs> the next Voyager probe or something. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so no mugging. You know, I can try. You know, for us to delay my answers to to <clears throat> pregnant pauses still work. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> right. yeah. And then you know the the video is really just to connect. You know, you need a yes. you need a human face there. Yeah. Yeah, it helps. I, I did one earlier this week with uh, Peter Chung. Actually, he has a, a, a his own uh, podcast through his Patreon or Patreon. I don't know which it is. Uh, Patreon. 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 As in pay. As in was well, in Patreon. <laughs> too. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, but uh, but that was a blast. You know that it's we're in an interesting new era with this remote everything. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I eat remotely. There's somebody. <laughs> how, do you, how, how does that work? Is that on a string or a Rube Goldberg kind of little rascal? It. It's, like an, it's like an app on your phone. You can just, I'm in the phase of my life when I don't know how things work. But <laughs> yeah, I, right. I, know, oh, I know it well. Yeah. <laughs> but, but John, hey, we're yeah. so happy that you are here. We've been friends for ages. You know, I love you. And I know that right now is kind of a perfect time to be doing this episode because... Mm-hmm. <laughs> you were Beavis and Butthead. The new Beavis and Butthead movie is coming out. And you were one of the, you were like in there back in the day of like getting this whole thing started. And it's amazing. But I mean, I know you had a long storied career. So if you could just kind of just walk us through a little bit of how you even got into what you're doing. 
Well, yeah, I'll t I can do that. Uh, you know, and I was thinking that I was walking comfortably along on the sidewalk and I slipped and fell in the mud uh, you know, <laughs> at, at, in the early 90s. You know, I had been working in public television. I had been, I had been producing uh, animation for Bill Moyers projects. I worked on a business series wow. where we did kind of like Monty Python-esque uh, oh. animated oh, wow. to explain business topics. It was called Adam Smith and uh, Adam Smith's Money World. I was on that for six years. And uh, so I was kind of doing that kind of stuff. And I kind of got off into the area of independent animation. I fell in love with it, with what I was seeing. It, it, it started for me with uh, with a short by an animator from Canada named Derek Lamb. Oh, <gasps> Derek Lamb, yeah. And uh, oh. he did a short, I can't remember the name, but Marshall Efron was the voice of a character who goes into a doctor's office and finds out he's got five minutes to live. <laughs> and then he just loses his mind. Right? Yeah. And that was a revelation to me, like, oh, my God, it's a medium, a hilarious medium for adults. Yes. And, you know, and then so that uh, tournée of animation came around, and the Will Vinton uh, oh, uh, oh, yeah. animation, yeah. festival of, of uh, claymation, and, the, and then the Sick and Twisted, and, Spike and uh, Mike. Spike and Mike, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. And I produced animation for a series for PBS again uh, called The Creative Spirit that was funded by uh, IBM. And I started reaching out to independent animators to create shorts. And uh, a, a number of ma mostly New York animators, but I, for instance, uh, Allison Snowden and David Fine uh, did several shorts. They're the ones that later did Bob's Birthday. Uh, okay, yeah. Series on uh, Comedy Central. I can't remember what they called it as a series, but but um, Bob and Margaret. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And um, so uh, along the way, as I started to get to know folks in animation, I had done a bunch of work with an animator named John Canemaker uh, that I hired on that series. And we were at a party in New York for the um, Film Board of Canada. And I said, John, who should I meet in this room? And he introduced me to Linda Semensky. And Linda was in, at that point uh, director of animation development at Nick, and we hit it off. And the reason we hit it off actually was we both liked going out to hear bands, and so we would go to the Knitting Factory and various hipster joints in New York, Ludlow Street Cafe. And then one day she said, "You know, I have a friend, Abby Turcooley at MTV. They've signed Mike Judge." who's created this oh. thing called Beavis and Butthead to, uh, to do a series and they need a producer. And wow. uh, I was the first hire. I did, I did some interviews wow. at uh, MTV and uh, I, I, I was sort of coached by Linda. You know, I remember for instance, I came into my second meeting with a schedule of production uh, written out on paper, <laughs> showed like how we could do 62 shorts, you know, in a year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was sort of bullshit. I had to adjust it, of course, later. Sure. But, but but you look great uh, coming out of yeah. the gate. Yeah. And and uh, the next meeting I came in for, my schedule was in everybody's binder. And nice. that, was, that was the one at which I, which I got hired. Wow. <laughs> so that was the beginning of, of um, sort of both. Uh, and also, you know, at MT, the great thing about MTD in those days was we all did everything, you know. And, I mean... You know, hey, oh, we need you to do this. Can you do? I mean, I was editing the early Beavis and Butthead music videos. You know, wow. wow. Get in there and do it. I had almost no footage to work with. You know, I would just have a, a music video scene and I would just cut to Beavis and Butthead as a still going like this. <laughs> you know, everyone would laugh. You know, yeah. <laughs> it was, I, I, always, you know? I always found that interesting because it was like a animated take on Mr. Science Theater in a way. You know, it was like they yeah. were. Yeah. And you would show sometimes some questionable <laughs> videos, like some artists just that weren't that good or just kind of like, and I, you know, I well, remember very well, like, what the hell is this shit? <laughs> it was, their reactions were really great. We, we had permission to use anything that had been submitted to the network. Wow. You didn't have wow. to have played. Yeah. So a lot of people only got played. Yeah. Right? You saw obscure videos and artists in that. Yeah. Yeah. And eventually uh, one of our teams, Team uh, Susie Lewis, who later produced uh, Daria, she was the kind of the hipster young person on the staff who who knew what what all the characters should wear. You know, there was a curmudgeonly older guy writer who went to Harvard, and then there was Susie who knew what they should wear, and, and, and they ran 
Randaria. Uh, I put them both into those roles. But um, she was allowed to go to all the meetings uh, when, when videos were submitted, like on Fridays, they would look at everything that came in and they'd say, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And then we'd get to Susie and say, we'll take it. You know, and, uh, <laughs> so we had all this great stuff to- uh, Sure, uh, yeah. You know, we cut them down. You know, we cut them yeah. down to a minute, a minute 15. You know, we, we did 400 videos. And, wow. you know, we, and, and our approach, you know, people will say to me, I love the Beavis and Butthead episode where Henry Rollins' veins are showing in his neck. I'd have no idea what episode that was in because we put them together just to make 11 minute modules. Sure. So right. we go like, okay, the cartoon's five minutes and 13 seconds. I need, you know, two minutes and Ooh. I need, you know, and we'd uh, checkerboard the video. And the other thing is when it first came up for Beavis and Butthead to have a show, they wanted them to be VJs who hosted, who talked to the audience. Uh -huh. And luckily Mike Judge had the good judgment to say, I don't think they're talking to the audience. Let them right. just talk to each other. And, right. and yeah. you know, it worked fine. So you have the funny dialogue of those characters and who they are. But then yeah. as you were talking about putting those initial videos together when you just had a drawing, it just goes to show how important yeah. the timing was of going right. from that video to them and how yeah. important that is. And it's one of those things that's like being able to understand music, you know, being able to just know instinctively that moment where, okay, let's go to them. Yeah, exactly. And when the, and when the audience would find that funny, you know, right? Because they're finding this right. sort of the same thing funny that Beavis and Butthead are finding funny, right? So, right. And then you know we gradually kind of formulated that whole thing. And, and <clears throat> you know, I, I recently uh, heard a little bit piece of interview with Mike Judge, or it might have been something I read, where he said he the great thing about doing those videos was it increased his depth of understanding of his characters. Because of what, it would say, what would come to mind, you know, he always went in, by the way, with a script, you know, there were different writers on the team that would get assigned to look at the videos and put some stuff on paper. But, you know, the thing about Mike is everything that ever got recorded, he's the voice. So, right. He would go through his filter, you know, and if he said the line and it wasn't funny the way he it was written, he would just instantly have another take on it that right. had the right twist. So, and by the way, I just heard like two days ago that finally on Paramount Plus, they're going to play the episodes with the videos, which they haven't. Nice. Ever wow. Yeah, oh, none, wow. Of the, none of the, uh, there, I think there was one collection they put out of maybe a bunch of the videos. But the problem, see, here's the thing is we can use those songs because they had been submitted for air on MTV. But as soon as you put it on a DVD or a home right. video, you're right. profiting. So right. they've never been able to do that. But I guess I guess on Paramount Plus, they've decided that it's essentially permissible in the same way as when it was uh, on cable. Right. Interesting. So that's kind there of- have been, uh, There have been bootleggers selling those DVD sets, including the videos, uh, for years oh. now. <laughs> oh, interesting. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's some of yeah, our yeah. friends, I think. Yeah, uh, making it, making, <laughs> Jay's making a few bucks on the side there. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I, I remember going to an early film festival and seeing just a clip, a short clip of Beavis and Budden. They were almost like less than a minute short. And they would show at the, and I think it was like Spike and Mike, they'd just show a bit of it. And it would start out with them just there going, ha, 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 ha. and it was so <laughs> stupid. You know, people started laughing and then it would end. Then we'd go into a different anime thing. And then they would be show a few more cartoons and then they'd come back. And then yeah. they'd show another little clip. But, and I guess that was like, is, is that how Beavis and Butthead just got started? It was just like these silly little things that they <clears throat> decided to string together? And No, I think that was more Spike and Mike repurposing, you know, that, that because Mike had done Frog Baseball and, and submitted that to Spike and Mike and got in. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was going to see the Spike and Mike Festival that made Mike realize that there was a place for what he wanted to do, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and he used to always say that he, he wanted to be a stand-up buddy, that he was too shy to do that. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of creating a character, because he had some other great characters. He had this one inbred Jed, who was like <laughs> a fat guy with a beard sitting in front of TV. And, and then he had Milton, you know, which ended up being sure. a character. In the yeah. Space. And he had one called, um, he had he had one which was a band, a bluegrass band. And uh, a guy would play for them. Hey, stop and, <laughs> you, know, you know, say some crazy country stuff. And then uh, I can't remember what that one was called. 
but so Sick and Twisted picked up a few things, and then they commissioned and paid for Monster Truck, which was his second short. Mm. Mm. Okay. Um, and uh, he always complained because later Spike and Mike were selling the cells from that, you know. And, <gasps> no. Oh, well, you guys, uh, animation, it's expensive, okay? You know, yeah, you, you're yeah. trying to make a few bucks here. You know, it's, uh, it, you know, it's funny if what I re- recall, because I, uh, you know, Matt and I were from the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, I worked at a, in a special effects studio up there. We would, in, in San Francisco, they would always have that Spike and Mike Animation Film Festival. And then there'd be some that would be just a little twisted and people would really like those. Yeah. So it went from, there was the Animation Film Festival, then it switched to the Sick and Twisted Animation Film right. Festival. Right. And then right. people would go <clears throat> way out of their way to make stuff so disturbing, so controversial. Right. So yeah. I'm like, yeah. I remember going to one going, oh my God, what? I'm going to watch this stuff for an hour. You know, the first yeah. one was yeah. so bad, so disturbing. Yeah. Um, Could you even do that these days? You know, good question, Matt. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to say. You know that the outsider kind of animation that you see now is is the, like stuff like Love, Death, and Robots, which is much more high budget, high production value. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I do a festival every year in Los Angeles, and we get a lot of student entries. But I would say they're generally pretty tame. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, mean they're, they're for unique. me, like, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, like, for me, in the 90s, when I watched MTV, when I discovered liquid television, you know, that's right. where I got exposed to a lot of this stuff. I mean, that's where, you know, Beavis and Butthead, that may be where I saw, first saw Beavis and Butthead. Sure. Um, but also Aeon Flux and Winter Steel and the Stick Figure Theater, all those. I loved all that stuff. It was so yeah. different and so completely different styles of animation and, and of humor all kind of packaged in this cool little, you know, half hour. And uh, I, I just loved it. I mean, that was, you know, it was, it was yeah. a great way to kind of get snippets and tastes of all the different kind of stuff out there. Well, and that was sort of pitched by Colossal. And, and uh, there was a guy, Jaffet Asher, who was the executive producer on that, a uh, British guy, where, uh, and he's worked for the BBC for years since. They kind of pitched MTV on the idea of, uh, of an animation showcase and it was sort of a combination of commissioned work like Eon Flux and uh, stuff that was, you know, just found that was like, out there. Okay. Yeah. Right. And so the folks at Colossal found some of it, the folks at MTV, various people, uh, Ron Diamond, who had Acme Filmworks, contributed to that. And because it was the on air promotion department at MTV that really did all the work with animation because of the IDs and the top of the hours and oh, all Oh, yeah, that. those classic, mm-hmm. right. Yeah. So it fell to uh, that, that department, Promo, to uh, essentially be the uh, in-house work curator who worked with Colossal in San Francisco. And mm-hmm. what happened is, uh, Abby Cooley, who was my boss, and he was the head of On Air Promo, he said to Colossal, listen, you know, we're getting such a reaction on Beavis and Butthead, we'd like to do it as a series. Do you want to make it? And they, they said... Uh, uh, it's, you know, we don't really want to. Do <laughs> um, and really, the rest is history, because that's what led to my being hired and uh, putting together an in-house team. Wow. You know, okay. um, we did one season with an outside studio, J.J. Settlemeyer, which was a commercial house in New York. And we were doing it all in, uh, in New York. And it just became too difficult to generate, you know, the pace we had to generate. And mm-hmm. so, we, so we started in-house to MTV, and literally they gave us space. We shared space with the state, by the way. Oh, really? Oh, wow! wow. <laughs> and, and we used to have problems with that because because we, you know, we were all like guys, you know, people drawing at tables, you know, and <laughs> they were like throwing soccer balls around. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we, were in the bank, we were in this space that later became where Total Request Lives uh, Studio. Which was the bank built? It was the ground floor of 50 <clears throat> Broadway, which had been a bank. Wow! And literally was just a big open space. I think Mike and I had one of the only offices, and we had to share it. And the, the, but the state was right there with us. <laughs> Tom Lennon, you know, and 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 his whole crew, you know. So now you did Beavis and Butthead, and at the time it was, I think it was cutting edge when it comes to, again, this kind of iconoclastic animation, adult style animation. And there was some controversy that surrounded it. There were, you know, it got blamed for something to do with a, a girl set herself on fire or something like that. Or, well, you know, I, unfortunately, I can tell you all the stories because <laughs> okay, 
they they came down upon us you know sure. right, right. and, and uh, for instance the one uh where where the uh the little boy and girl were left alone by their mom in their trailer which didn't have cable yeah that's yeah that's what i read too it's like what <laughs> yeah and the kid uh one of the kids had a problem with playing with matches already. He was only like you know, six or something. And do they blame the matches? No. No, nope, they, <laughs> they did not. And, you know, the painful thing was to put us through the, you know, because people will throw, you know, as we know, uh, in the, in the age of fake news, you throw, oh, yeah. out <laughs> right. And you know, his grandmother or something is saying, you know, it's like that Beavis and Butthead thing or what, whatever got said, got turned into. It's right. amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. But, you know, that being said, Kids do copy some stuff. And there was one experience, the mind-blowing experience. We had a cartoon called um, Haiku. And it was very short. It was just like Beavis and Butthead. The, the teacher is asking them to uh, learn, teaching them Haiku. And when it gets to Beavis and Butthead, they're going like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Right. right. Uh, haiku. And then, then <laughs> <laughs> and, and and there wasn't much to the script. It was a, and it was kind of a throwaway. And I and I said to Mike, I was I was directing the voices, you know, most of which were him. But I was I was I was the producer on the other side of the wall. I said, Mike, can you come up with something to do just to open the scene before uh, Van Driesen talks? And he said, Yeah, I got an idea. And he goes like, Yeah, no, take your mat, take your lighter, no. Do the aerosol, no, and then right, <laughs> and then that got animated as Beavis setting himself on fire. Right? Oh. And, and and we later had to make some alterations that showed that he was badly burned. So you would <laughs> don't do this at home. Right? Yeah. Right. But that that night or the night that it premiered. I went home and on the 11 o'clock news, there were two little girls in Newark, New Jersey, sitting on a big chair and their curtain behind them was on fed burned totally. <laughs> and, and, and they were arguing, they, they interviewed these girls and she said, well, Butthead said, you know, burn, you know, and then oh my God. My sister said, she said, that's not Butthead, that's Beavis. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so so uh, <clears throat> that was a case of, very direct, you know, uh, bad parenting. Right, right. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, indeed. It's I mean, look, parenting. you know, you can't blame entertainment or art for right. anything that goes wrong in this world. Of course. And and that's what that's what I think is different now than say when you guys were doing that because the show was so popular that you guys weathered these things where right. maybe in this day and age, who knows, a show like that could get yanked. That would be it. Well, where's I know there's the one episode Heroes, right? Remind me what's in that. I remember that's the one where they they shoot they shoot down the plane or whatever. Oh yeah, (laughs) Yeah. you know they get like skeet rifles and shoot down the plane. (laughs) Controversy. At the end of the day, the truth of the matter is that the money that the the revenue that the show was generating made it impossible that MTV would give it up. (laughs) Right. Really. Moved it later. You know. Right. Because it was. In all fairness, it was playing at 4 p.m. Mountain Time, you know. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. That is an after-school viewing. I don't know. <laughs> right. Did right. you did you get any pressure, any uh, pushback? Yeah, it's all? like. Well, I mean, it was all just an end of, you know, uh, the letters from mom or, you know, I I, I, I had a call from a sheriff. I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> a <it was> sheriff. <laughs> Yeah, and there were and there were also, you know, people that, you know, I think Beavis at some point, you know, wanted to stick a firecracker in the butt of a cat or something <laughs> yeah and uh but you know we got mike a bodyguard and he was he was wow he was joe wow. frazier's nephew <laughs> oh wow man. And, and and he would stand at when we were at the recording studio he would stand outside <laughs> were there wow. any other any did it there were any actual confrontations with people yeah. no, there were, yeah, no okay. there were not well, there was just right. fear. there was fear but you know, it was yeah, it was frightening for Mike because he here he goes from total obscurity to a marked man. You know, like, <laughs> by, the, by the way, um, you know Boomhauer, the character in King of the Hill. Yeah, uh, that, yeah. That character was entirely based on uh, a guy who left a threatening phone call on Mike's uh, voicemail. <laughs> wow. Really? He called MTV and asked for Mike Judge. They would just switch it to his line, and it was this guy going like, <laughs> "I don't even know, fucking shit, what the fuck, you know." <laughs> <laughs> one, one day I woke up in the morning and Mike said, "Hey, listen to this," and put it up the speaker. 
<laughs> and, and that became the genesis, you know. Wow. That's wow. Great. That's, that's great. That's amazing. It was a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. And once again, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Have you seen the newest film? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I just want to quickly say, you know, I when I first met Matt Groening, I said I produced Beavis and Butthead. And he said, he, I want to say thank you very much for taking some of the pressure off me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Yes, Interesting. right. Yeah. Interesting. Sure there was, yeah, because there was, you know, uh, I remember uh, a couple of different ladies I knew who were very thought it was horrible because, you know, he... There was the idea that Bart was anti-education mm-hmm. and there was some sort of a button that kids were wearing that was like, you know, stupid and proud of it or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, even, I think I even have it. Uh, and, and so, you know, and I remember my mother literally saying, oh, that Bart Simpson. And I said, well, if you see the show, it's, you know, it's very smart. I said, you know, most of the writers went to Harvard. And she said, no, I'd never watch it. You know, and, and and that's really the scene. You know, I was, had relatives too who commented on Bart and the entire Simpson family is just this horrible role model for families. And you're like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's satire. It's a it's a parody yeah. of right. yeah. families. Yeah. And uh, the other thing that I heard was with Flanders and how it was making fun <laughs> of religion, but right. yet when you'd watch the Ooh, show, yeah. Flanders is the <laughs> nicest. Most giving, yes. beautiful person on the show. <laughs> right. Yes. 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 True. Yes. Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. It's everybody else around him that makes it so hard for him to be Flanders. It's right. like um, it, it, these shows are a litmus test for if you get whether you respond to satire and understand it. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's exactly. the whole thing. It's it's just like look, this is the point. You either yeah. get it or you don't. You know. But, you know, an interesting thing with Beavis and Butthead, you know, because there's both the people that laugh at them and say, those remind me of some kids I knew. And <laughs> right. And then there's the people who say, yeah, that was exactly like me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. And, oh, and when, when I'm half first... and half on that. Oh, yeah, no. me too. Me too. <laughs> yeah, on... You really? No, yep. Nothing like me. Nothing. We're all on the, no. we're all on what the a surprise. On the, we're, all on the, we're, all the, we're all somewhere on the spectrum. But you know, we, re, we retested Beavis and Butthead about two years in. Hmm. And one of the kids in the focus group said, they used to be cool. Now they're just stupid. You know, and huh. there was something happened because, you know, maybe one too many writers did go to Harvard. You know, <laughs> sort of self-consciousness uh, that, 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 that there was a certain kind of bullshit detector in yeah the yes board. it's a fine line yeah yeah it's a fine line and they started to like oh, wait a minute you know mm-hmm. <laughs> and you know when they brought beavis back in whatever year that was when mtv sort of abortedly brought it back but then uh after three weeks they brought jersey shore in to replace it you know so- <laughs> <laughs> things changed oh <laughs> man yeah, yeah. But, oh. uh, but but people some people said that Mike Judge's comments no longer sounded like teenage boys. They now sounded like an uncle, you know. Mm, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> interesting. Uh, but uh, uh back to the movie. Uh, yeah, what I, do you think? I, uh what do you uh what are your thoughts about it? Well, I mean, I was very entertained. I watched it twice. I, I got up at six thirty in the morning and watched it on the first day. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I watched the first half hour again just before we got on, just to you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, the thing is that it's it, every trope of Beavis and Butthead is represented. You know, it's it's structurally very similar to the first movie. I love the I, first movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. me too. There's this sort of a Greg Kinnear sidekick character. You know, there's there's some uh, you know uh, FBI types that are trying to track them down. <laughs> Even the voice of the woman astronaut sort of reminds me of Demi Moore, you know, mm. and, and, you know, and because that was who they thought they were going to screw in the first movie. And, it is, <laughs> right. and, and it's the same misunderstanding in this movie, which is they think they're going to get laid. Uh, and everything <laughs> this person says, they interpret as. You know, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Telling That's them. great. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, uh, you know, and of course they travel through time. Right, of course. <laughs> you address and the, uh, the, the yeah. centerpiece uh, for both, for me, is the uh, lead up to Cornholio, which in, in, <laughs> any, in, yeah. any, in any of the, the episodes or in the movies, it's always, to me, it's just such joy in knowing yes. and anticipating that it's coming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. And, and so, so uh, you know, my feeling was no surprises whatsoever, but everything was up to par. <laughs> mm-hmm. Nice. 
Yeah, yeah I guess there's something to be said for not fucking with the formula. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. well, well, John, just can you just tell me, like, for someone who might be listening who has no clue who Beavis and Butthead are, <laughs> could you could you tell us, explain? Give us their who, entire origin story. No, no, no. <laughs> who Beavis and Butthead who are, are they? What motivates them? No, I didn't say that. But, but I said for, that for like, let's say my sisters who are my sisters who are listening, probably cleaning their house right now. It's like who, who haven't seen Beavis and Butthead. How would you explain Beavis and Butthead? Well, I mean, I think they're their classic dummy duo where there's one guy who positions himself as the smart guy and the other guy is so dumb that he believes his friend. <laughs> right, right. And, and in that sense, it's Abbott and Costello or Laurel and Hardy as teenage boys. And, uh, you know, there's some in print, you know, there's some, you know, historical uh, uh, the Cats and Jammer Kids, which is a German thing. Uh, you know, there's yeah. a couple, couple early things in comics that are kind of those kind of duos, but put them in Texas, you know, put them in, in kind of the wide perfect spaces. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> never introduce parents. They, they right. Like, right. There's no reference to, you know, your mother's a whore or something. But, uh, <laughs> and, and as you all remember in the first movie, you know, David Letterman and, uh, and yeah. I can't remember who <laughs> the Kinnear did the other role, but, but uh, you know, apparently were roadies and came through town and screwed their moms, you know. I love that. That's so good. And Wasn't they like know, Motley Crue roadies or something or I can't I, yes, I think I think I think so, yeah. And um, you know, they're in this living room which is never even really defined as whether it's Butthead or Beavis's, you know, they're one of the That's true. And Mike was very religious about wanting to never violate any of that, you know, oh. information. <clears throat> Because it's not a Nickelodeon show, you know, where they no. check in on you, and you know. Right, Although right. it is, it is revealed in this new movie that it was the Beavis household. Yes, yes, Because exactly. the, the realtor talks about the mother, and that the mother. Spoiler the alert! Last, the, the mother's last name was Beavis. So all, all the yeah, while, that was, thinking, a, that was a weird thing to suddenly realize that Beavis was his uh, essentially what the way you call a kid by by the last name. Ooh. Right. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't know who's seen it. So you've seen it. I have not seen mm-hmm. it. I've not so. seen it. Yet. <clears throat> yeah. Well, uh, you know, they go through time from 98 to the present. <laughs> and, and, Perfect. and so, unfortunately, you know, the house is being sold off. Oh, I think there may have been an owner in between, but uh, it's right. been redone as well. You know, so there's some very funny <laughs> stuff around what happened to our house, you know. Yeah. Have you guys heard about uh, or seen any of the uh, fabulous Furry Freak Brothers? No, I or can't that? wait for that. Mm-hmm. Though. Yeah, but I've like, heard of them, yeah. It's on Tubi. It was it was a comic book that uh, you know, I had all of them. Yeah, yeah, really. Okay, you have them. So yeah. you know that I, I don't know how they managed to fund the first season, but you know it's John Goodman, Pete Davidson, and uh, Woody Harrelson, and uh, Tiffany Haddish plays their their cat, and uh, it's the same sort of idea. They you know they wake up in this basement apartment, and uh, you know they have. They took some bad drugs and were asleep for, you know, 50 Always. years. So yeah. <laughs> they're now in the present. And, of course, pot is legal, you know, on the West Coast. So <laughs> but uh, but it's, it's, it's funny. It's well written. It's some guys from King of the Hill writing it. Uh, the voices are great. I mean, it, that list of people all have great voices. Yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I, I love the comic. I, yeah. loved, I love Fat Freddy's cat. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And Fat Freddy was hilarious. And yeah. and, uh, and it's very true to the designs, of, or at least. Great. I always I, remember there was a joke in the Freak Brothers where somebody comes up with a machine where it can pull the drugs that you spill into the carpet out of the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> so it has all these little spigots where the, the yeah. drugs come out. Right. So he's vacuuming it up and uh, a bunch of pot comes out of this one. And then Coke comes out of this one. And then there's all this yellow powder. And they're like, what's that? He goes, oh, that must be all the beer that we spilled. (laughs) (laughs) Fried powdered beer. (laughs) Well, anyway, I recommend it. There's some, there's some shorts they did as demos that are on on YouTube, but then I'll check it out. Yeah. Yeah. On this general, on the general topic, you guys are, 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 are talking about, you know, I mean, there is definitely not as much, I mean, it's interesting that both South Park and Family Guy and The Simpsons, all all three, are here. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. They've managed to survive throughout 
canceling and uh, controversy. And, and it's, yeah. it's like one mm-hmm. of the few, it's like animation is one of the few places where you can still be provocative and get away with stuff. I mean, South Park does jokes that I can't even believe like the, that they get away yeah. with that, but, they but parody, it's, yeah, everything. it's wonderful though. It's like, that's, yeah. that's what art is. It, you know, it pushes buttons and there should yeah. be a safe zone where you can do this kind of comedy and, and no one gets butt hurt. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, apparently it's still cable, you know, it's, it's yeah. still, I mean, right. and, and, yeah. fo- and Fox on Sunday nights, you know, and, and, <laughs> yeah. it's, sort of, it's sort of amazing. I mean, I, you never hear about there being controversy, but I, I don't know how much they've been watered down. I mean, I would say, unfortunately, it's been so long that I haven't looked at a new Simpsons episode in forever. Right. It's been a while for me, too. Yeah. 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 South Park for me, too. I mean, South Park for me, I, the main one I remember was this, the parody of uh, Scientology, which... Right. Uh, which got uh, Isaac yeah, which Hayes to Isaac leave, Hayes, right? who was yeah. a Scientologist, decided to leave after that. But uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, but that was a hilarious episode. And Trapped in the closet you know? is what it's called. Well, yeah. he either decided to leave or the decision might have been made for him. True. Oh, really? I, well, I, mean, I hear, I hear both, though. And I also yeah. hear that Trey Parker and Matt Stone actually did tell him, look, we're going to parody this. You, you know, you're cool with it. And I, that, that's why I, I hear different stories. But, um, but whatever I, it was, he, he left after I, I will, hilarious episode. I will say yeah. this, John. What's kind of interesting is, uh, like Matt and Sean and, and James, I mean, when The Simpsons started, you know, I, I watched it. I watched it religiously. And I don't know whether you get a, kind of a fill or whatnot. Even South Park, you know, I was watching it. And then I stepped away. But what's happened is my 17-year-old daughter is watching those like crazy and she's like she mm, right. loves south park she will do the cartman voice to uh <laughs> my wife and i and we're like oh honey and she goes man man dad wait turn the heat down you know and it's like so freaking funny but it's like i'm wondering if it, it just catches people at a certain time or, or something you know yeah, possibly. And, uh, well, and but, the, the fact that your daughter too is not offended by it is a no, really hopeful right, thing right Exactly. So, I mean, she, and so I'm wondering if it's, it's like you go through a certain period of watching it and then it's like, and then you step away, but they continue to do it because there's always going to be that group of people that discovers it. And then, oh my right, gosh, this right. is the greatest thing. It's a fresh and, new thing. Exactly. Well, exactly. So in what, in a way they, the, the thing they did was wisely stay right where they were. It feeds you at a certain age. It's just exactly what you want. Yeah. John, yeah. I, I got for Christmas, this is back in what, 2000 and, and 2002, I think. I got my wife a large stuffed Cartman. You press his little <laughs> hand button, he goes, ah, weak, and cartoons kick ass. And, and well, she liked it, for, you know, for like a couple of years. Then she put it away. <laughs> my daughter has come and dirt it. She is in her room now. She loves good. it. So. That's like finding someone's drum <laughs> kit. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Larry, I have, Larry. I, yeah. I have a large stuffed Cartman, but I've never pressed the finger. I should. I, I should. It's his hand. It's his little hand. And if you, well, you, well, John, you need to put batteries in it. You know. Well, maybe <laughs> you need to put batteries in it and, and touch his finger. Interesting. Did I say finger? I said hand. Hand. Okay. Hand. Okay. okay. Uh, well, you pull the finger. You pull, you pull yeah. the well, finger. James, James, what was that? You know, Larry, among among the four of us co-hosts, you have a child. And what I was thinking in, in advance of this episode was that when I was a kid, cartoons were for kids, for the most part. Yeah, that's uh, true. When, so you thought. You're, we, we, yeah, well, back then, for the most part, I mean, unless it was Fritz the Cat, which was playing in the theater that I couldn't get into because I was a kid, right? I, I might have seen the ad for it, and I was tantalized because it's like, ooh, an X-rated cartoon. Ooh, what's that all about? But for the most part, it was kid-friendly, and it was geared toward me, at least in television. Hmm. Larry, as a parent, when you were raising your daughter in an age where there was The Simpsons and South Park and Family Guy, it's hard for me to imagine being a parent now and sort of trying to kind of policing uh, all the different yeah. pop culture yeah. influences. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have to like, did you exercise any caution in what Kathy was exposed to? Boy, James, I got to tell you, that's a great question. I, I do have to say this. I think I put myself and my kid in a completely different category because the four of us here, we all love science fiction, fantasy, and horror. And as a very small child, you know, I showed my kid creature from the black lagoon. Right. Frank, yeah, it's like all her. these guys. My kid kind of grew up 
learning about black and white films and classics and stuff. We watch classic cartoons, but yes, James, we, we watched a lot of Barbie movies, but then something happened. We did all the Barbie movies and then she got into the monster high stuff monsters you know they're still it's like they're teenagers cartoons solving problems and what's cool about monster high not necessarily controversial but but it's like because these kids are monsters and they're all kind of odd and different stuff but it kind of embraces differences which is a nice thing to learn yeah but what's happened is between the age of like when she became a teenager 13 james i gotta tell you i i didn't i I wasn't worried about animation on television. I really wasn't. I didn't police anything. Um, mm. I just felt my kid was a, a good kid. She liked monster stuff and, and things like that. I think but she's she, well-rounded. And, but and you smart. Did, you but she started yeah. to watch South Park. And I talked to her about South Park. And I go, well, honey, you know, there's some stuff that's kind of adult, kind of, you know. And, and I didn't police it. She just started <laughs> to get into it. And her friends, look, you can't – when these kids go to school, they all talk about it, James. Yeah. And, and, right. and they hey, all Larry, start – But also, you know what you didn't do? You didn't go, oh, no, you can't watch that. No. Right. Don't no, watch it enticing. Right. bad. No, yeah. Sean. And it's, I, then, it's, then it's not a big deal. It's like, okay, this is just another thing that's kind of – like it's, that's – that makes that's the, the way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so and James, I would say though, James, what you said about uh, cartoons being made for kids at the time, but I would say like the Looney Tunes at their best, <laughs> that's were what so I was sharply thinking. written and had undercurrents that, that you now as an adult can watch and still be entertained. Yes. They're, they, they're, they, they did the, they did the perfect kind of balance but, in a way. Sh- no, people don't understand. When those films were shown, it was shown in a movie theater. When you right. went to go to the movie theater, you would see there would be a cartoon, a newsreel, and a film. Right. And so yeah, you yeah. took your kid. And so, of course, the Chuck Jones was brilliant because he knew. It's like you got to entertain the kid, but you also got to entertain the parent who's there right. with the kid. Right. And that's a uh, – yeah, all those Looney Tunes – see, James, I wasn't a big fan of some of the Hanna-Barbera, the really cheap ones. I know you're Mr. Flintstones. You like that. <laughs> but but it's like some of the cheap Hanna-Barberas I didn't like but looney tunes is like shauna said those are just genius genius, but it's it's like similar to the simpsons in the sense that the simpsons works on two levels if you're younger and you like to hear bart say cowabunga or whatever you know shorts it it works it works on that level but then there's a million other jokes that go under the radar that are for the adults and sometimes really obscure stuff. And it was the same thing with Looney Tunes. I mean, they made so many movie references and things that I don't think any kid was getting. They just thought it was funny. Also it's Mel Blanc's delivery that also worked, but sure. But yeah, I mean, it was hitting both audiences and, I always there's usually my favorite sort of uh, animated work is something like that, that works on a number of levels. But John, what about your son? Oh, by the way, I was just going to say, I remembered it with the button, the uh, the Bart Simpson button said underachiever and proud of it. (laughs) (laughs) That's just funny. That's just funny. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, and and, uh, one other little thought I wanted to put in there on, on Looney Tunes. Uh, Chuck Jones told a story. When I did that creativity series, we interviewed Chuck Jones, and he drew wow. the whole time. By the way, I had some great Chuck Jones drawings on my wall. Oh, man. Oh. oh. He, he handed them to me when af- at the end of the <gasps> – Oh, geez. my God. Oh, wow. Oh. That's awesome. I didn't have him sign them because that would have seemed a little too, uh, you know, like, you know, could you please put your <laughs> name on it? Really, really. <laughs> <laughs> All four of us would have been. No, no, just, you just sign it, please. <laughs> but, you know, he said he was trying to explain to I think it was to his grandmother what he did for a living, and he said, "Well, you know, I'm writing, I'm writing for Bugs Bunny," and <laughs> and, and and his grandmother said, "What does he need you for?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's unbelievable, you know, El Blanc's character. You know, character right, right. You know. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. These are but, real uh, people. When my when my son was really little, you know, uh, Jerry Beck had been curating all these Fleischer, yes. early Fleischer Popeyes. Mm. And we had a tiny little, um, you know, flip open DVD player. And we watched all those, all of those, you know, uh, and some Betty Boops and things. But mm-hmm. but the physical comedy and that stuff, just he just rolled and he would look at me and he'd see these things happen on the screen and he would just turn to me and just crack up. So uh, that's what he was fed on, you know, in the early days. Right. And the, but then there was a moment when that thing, when scary stuff, you know, took a little while, like when he was maybe six, maybe even less, I showed him Iron Giant, you know, and I oh, thought, oh, yeah, great yeah. film. Little boy yeah. with a giant and all, you know, but there's a scene where the giant is tangled in the electrical wires. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. 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 And my, 
we're sitting on the bed. My son turned to me and he said, Dad, I think we better stop watching this now or I'll never be able to go outside again. Traumatic. <laughs> oh. wow. and, and it was almost like uh, it was it was such a sophisticated thing for him to say at that yes. age. <laughs> I almost felt like it was the voice of God. You know? <laughs> and, and he saw it again, you know, he must have been four because he saw it again at, at six because we showed it at the uh, Los Angeles Animation Festival and he had no problem with it. But he was right. Just, right. Yeah. Because, it just hit him at the right yeah. moment. Yeah. Yeah, they don't know the difference between reality and, and yeah, uh, yeah. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs scared the fuck out of me sure. when I was so many, a little oh, kid. Especially that transformation scene to the witch. Oh um, yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. So it's beautiful, but very scary and you yeah, know, scary images. Yeah. And for me, Pinocchio was the scary one when that, that is scary. Yeah, <laughs> that was. Mm -hmm. Or how to live your life properly. You see, that's I see I see Matt hanging with Lampwick. You see, that's, come on, come on, you smoke a cigar, play pool. Hey, come on, you, you take know, some you, uppers. Yeah, you 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 take turning into a donkey away, and that's a great island. Yeah, really. Yeah, there's, there's no island. downside. Really, yeah. you know, Harry still never watched Beavis and Butthead, and he, though he, he got the word somehow that it wasn't for him, like when he was maybe ten. You know, and I would say, oh, I, I can show you the movie. It's probably, and he go, I don't think I should watch this, Dad. You know? Like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> but now he's into all the heaviest anime stuff, you know? Oh, oh cool. Yeah, okay. and anime can be pretty dark. Well, sure. I, let's let's go right to this, too, which is uh, hentai. Mm. Like, that's, oh, yeah. Uh, talk about sure. controversial. Yeah. And, you know, and it's a way of getting around the censorship laws in Japan. In Japan yeah. Where yeah. the, I, I would think the most famous type of hentai is the tentacle porn. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah. you know, in a regular pornography in Japan, you have to pixelate all the genders and everything. Yeah. And, and um, if it's not a human, well, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, by the way, interestingly, just the other day, a Japanese person told me, Sometimes you don't know whether someone told you or you heard it on a show, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Came into my brain that what they had to do was because of things written in law by the occupying power. That's I, right. In the United States. Yeah. And that pixelization of the genitals, we're actually responsible for. Yes. You know? yeah. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. I didn't realize it's, that. It's lasted all this time, too. You know, we, we wrote their constitution. Yeah. Their oh, wow. <laughs> where's where's that porn clause? Because you know, <laughs> need to work on that one again. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that stuff is so bizarre. And I remember the first time that I was introduced to hentai and it was the big thing that was going around. James, I'm sure you know this. And you guys all know this is that now correct my pronunciation. Yuratsuki Doji, Legend of the okay. Overfiend. Yes. Yes. I've heard of that. Yeah. I was I was on a Greek island in 1993, and I overheard two female backpackers talking about this movie. They had no idea what the title was, but they described this scene where this demon rapes a woman, and his penis grows to the point where it completely tears her apart. And the, you know, then <laughs> I <get home. laughs> and then I get back home and I'm like, okay, well, where can I rent this movie? Because are you serious? serious? Well, at not that point, you you couldn't Google that at that time. No, right. no. <laughs> the Japanese do have a way of sometimes taking something that's really dark subject matter and kind of making it beautiful. You know what I mean? Like uh, through the animation, it's a very dark beauty, but. They, it's an aesthetic. It's an aesthetic, uh, yes. Yeah. And, and and so, but it's also case by case too. And there are certain things like that one. It's not certainly one of my favorite animes. It goes way over the top, and it it's not like the the story is all that strong either. But yeah. the fact that that even exists, that type <laughs> right. of animation, yeah. is it's really a a strange culture marker, you know? Yeah. And and my son will watch will even watch them in Japanese, you know, with subtitles or you know. Wow, that's loves, good. Loves the theme music too. Like he's you know. Oh yeah, sure, <laughs> are, yeah. Those corny, <laughs> over the top. You know, it's it's like something out of like a '80s TV or something. Some of them, you know. What's some of his favorites? Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, he loved Sword Sword Art Online. Was a was a big one. Okay. 
I don't think I can name a lot of the other ones. <laughs> they all seem to be variations on uh, uh, Death Note. Same kind of what's it? Death, Death Note. Death Note. Yeah. Death Note. My it's, daughter loved that. I mean, as far as being controversial, mm -hmm. the thing about being able to have this little book that you could write in it that someone will die at this time by a heart attack or whatever, and it comes true. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, and then if you have this power, where do you go with this? And, yeah. And, and it's I a guess book the, this guy lost. Finds, it was lost by a demon. But it was supposedly lost, left behind oh, somewhere sure. by a demon. And then well, this and, all sounds like the stuff that he's, that he's into, you know, and, okay. and pretty much lives on Funimation, Crunchyroll, or whatever, whatever, yeah. you know, venues play all that stuff right right uh, and, and binge watches i mean till 1 a.m every night longer <laughs> on holidays you know <laughs> sure. so, so so he's probably covered it all uh you know and 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 sort of given up trying to trying to rope me in you know but but <laughs> uh but back a few years ago when it was sword art online for instance i watched quite a bit of it with him you know? and did you like any of it yeah i mean i thought it was i thought it was well done you know it's so interesting that whole formula you know, it's funny, Eric Calderon did a really funny parody where he took all the all the scenes, because there's always such limits to the lip sync, you know, there are all these right. scenes that are very static, and, and, you know, the opening titles will be wild, and then right. the piece itself will be very static, maybe it'll have some action, stylized sure. action scenes, but Eric did this piece where um, he took all the scenes where people were had their back to the camera and did all the dialogue back to camera. <laughs> So he'd walk into a room and he'd go like, "Gentlemen, I'm so glad you were here." Today. <laughs> he just he just found a way to have all dialogue, you know, you know, avoid avoid the face, you know. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. part of uh, he did that for Cartoon Sushi when we when we did that, uh, which was like our kind of low budget follow up to uh, Liquid Television. Right, right. <clears throat> well, that's the good thing about say a cartoon like the spider-man cartoon back in the 60s was oh, yeah. that you know you got a mask on yeah. <laughs> right, make a speech yeah. go ahead yeah. Yeah. Right, exactly yeah yeah um well speaking yep. of liquid television too though the other show that just stood out for me so much was um i think probably the closest tv animated series that came closest to like the magazine heavy metal uh mm. which, which was aeon flux yes like that that wow. to me like it felt like a like a heavy metal you know, story and look and had the look and feel of it. And just the image of her catching a fly in her eilashes is just such yeah, a yeah, that sums amazing, it up. amazing but, iconic well, image. But Sean, it's, it's very someone, hard to do, by the way. Yeah, but Sean, for <laughs> someone who hasn't seen Anne Flex, how would you describe it? What I, is it? It's, it's, she's, it's, she's kind a of this spy. elite assassin spy, yes. and she's always on these missions. And it's, it's in the future, or it's yeah. another planet. Does it like an evil corporation kind of? It, it's just yeah. everything. And, kind by, of, and by the way, uh, uh, there's a little bit of a North Korea, South Korea thing in there too, because Peter Chung is Korean. Oh, you know? okay. and, and one of the things, one of the tropes of the series is that. The border between these two places, which are uh, uh, Monica, Monica and Brenya, I think the Brenyans yeah, yeah. and the Monicans, the, the border runs through buildings, through hallways, <laughs> like, oh, and cool. apart, through That's apartments. Cool. So, so that there, you're constant. There's border everywhere. You know, they're always. That's cool. Crossing. That is great. She's sort of going to kill Trevor Goodchild. But she's also gonna fuck him, you know. They're, they're like, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's sort of Bondian in that way. You know? Yeah, a little bit Bond, but also like Bond and Barbarella, and like I said, heavy metal, and it's just, it just, the look of it was, it was very kind of harsh and kind of like angles of it. Just the style of animation just was really cool. I just, it, I, I immediately took to that. I never, that, never seen anything like that before. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah and, I agree. And, didn't, and John, didn't they do a thing where? They made a point of trying not to use dialogue for like. Well, they, yeah, yeah. Exact, exactly. I mean, I, I sort of laughed that it was, you know, if it were more comedic, it would almost be like Buster Keaton because those <laughs> early shorts were all just wild action. And she yeah. died at the end of every one, you know. That's right. Yeah, that's right. All to her death. And, and of course, we couldn't do that when we changed to a half hour format. And, you know, <laughs> right. And added, added voices. But we also tried to keep her dialogue as minimal as possible. Right, right. So she was kind of like the futuristic Kenny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly the same thing. But um, a couple of things that came up in, in one of the interviews I heard that Peter did with Jaffet Asher talking about the development of that. 
they both loved uh, a Dashiell Hammett novel called The Glass Key, hmm. which uh, I now have to read, and I think I own because I, you know, I collect these vintage paperbacks and don't. Beautiful collection, by the way. Yeah, but wasn't uh, that a movie too with like Alan Ladd or something? Probably, and I think and it was. Oh, I know they it, that could have been partially it, but uh, you know, and it sounds to me like there must be a sort of a MacGuffin aspect, but there are a lot of mm-hmm. things in Eon of sort of you know kind of putting a key into what kind of looks like a chastity belt. On yeah, yeah. Right, and, right. And drinking things out of little vials, you know, and, and people hiding in, in, in cabinets, you know, where they're, you know, throbbing as they're, you know, spewing <laughs> something out of their mouth. But the other thing that was interesting that Peter said that he, when he looks back on it, he finds a lot of it much more misogynistic than he is comfortable with now. <laughs> right. As mm. a year old with a 13 year old, you know, son. <laughs> Yeah. Right. You know, I never saw it, but I know that in 2005 they did a live action film with Charlie's Theron. Yeah. Right? yeah. I've never seen that. Was that any good? Did it do well? Well, I mean, it was, we had a lot of thoughts about it. I remember we had a gathering after it came out, and, and they didn't consult Peter in any way. Really? Mm. I didn't. Yeah, don't bother consulting the creator of the thing. Yeah. Uh, oh. Well, and basically to have a basic understanding of yeah. the show. Right. I yeah. She was, I thought she was very miscast physically. You know, uh, yes, yeah, yeah, because you needed somebody much. I mean, just uh, just the build is not right. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. There was that woman uh, in Lin- Linda in Terminator. What was her Linda name? Hamilton? Yeah, I mean that name came up early, and then Demi Moore came up after she did GI Jane. Mm-hmm. But you needed someone who was very had this, you know, because that physical action. You know, you needed to work with uh, you know lots of stunt people. And yeah, you, you needed that. They just didn't get that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Carrie Ann Moss from The Matrix. She was almost yeah. kind of a character like she that. She was kind of like yeah. Eon Flex. And, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, and she had the physicality, I think. She might have made a good Eon Flex. But well, I'll tell you, it's hard to compete with what a fantastic character design Peter yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. Whenever yeah. you see it in a poster or something, it just holds up, you know, that black hair and that curl and the very yeah. face. Yeah. yeah. And give me a leather cat suit of any type any day, <laughs> you know, and it's, yeah. you know, it's a happy way, day. Uh, one time I heard him, he had his own panel, just a panel of one at Comic-Con and people were giving, asking questions. And a woman asked him, a young, young woman, you know, 18 or whatever, um, how come Ian Flux is wearing so little clothing, so scantily dressed? <laughs> and, and Peter said, well, really, she was intended to be naked, but they made me put something on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I just love that. He was not backing down, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no political correctness there. You know? but, uh, uh, another one that I liked around that time was the Spawn cartoon that they did on HBO. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Which was also very dark. I don't know. I don't know if there was much controversy around it. But it, pretty it, violent, though. But it was very violent, and you know, yeah. and they, uh, you know, there's a running storyline of a character that's like a child killer, and uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. We were producing uh, the Max, you know, based on Sam, yeah, Pinsk, mm-hmm. which I love. Uh, and I think you know, Sam and Todd McFarlane almost had like a little competition, like, oh, I got my show, and I got, you know, right. and, and but but Sam's thing had more heart to it, you know, there was was more layered, you know, it's this yes. kind of homeless guy who also fantasizes that he's a superhero in this right. imagined right. land, you know, and, and, and this woman who's a social worker, but she's also kind of the goddess that, you know, rules or, you know, his psyche. And we struck a pretty cool balance between something that was very much had the look of a comic book, mm-hmm. but then also had action. Yeah, you know? I completely agree. And, I mean, I almost feel in some ways, you know, it, some of the things that were in that Spider-Man, that most recent animated Spider-Man, are into the mo- uh, much Spider-verse. more sophisticated. Spider-Verse, right. <clears throat> much more sophisticated technology, you know, thirty years later, but right. um, you know, and and a much bigger budget. But some of that finding the balance between things that were graphic and highly rendered. Yeah, yeah, the visual. Yeah, style of it. <laughs> and and with the Max and with Spawn, one thing that I liked about both series is that it felt to me like the comic come to life. Yeah. And that was something that I was always looking for 
way back then because you were so often we were disappointed by either a live action movie or even an animated thing where it would come out yeah. and it just felt flat or wrong or didn't have the right tone. And I wasn't a huge fan of Spawn the comic book, which is basically about an assassin, a uh, government assassin guy who's killed by his what he thinks is his best friend. And he goes to hell and he gets to come back as Spawn, this red cloaked almost skull-like character, almost like a demon, a cross yeah, between yeah. a man and a demon. And he's going to go back and he's going to get revenge. But um, I actually thought the animated series was better than the comic for me. Mm-hmm. And and that's great. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's, you could just let people alone and let them make <laughs> the thing, you know, yeah, like yeah. make this what it was. Right. right. Now, if you want to make a different show, then go do that. <laughs> but let's make this spawn. Let's make this the max, you know, and I, yeah. I'm always rooting for that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the things with the max is that uh, we essentially partly out of practicality, we did the books. Like at that point, I think he had 13 books and we did right. 13 half out, you know, uh, 11 minutes and, and kind of just went through that story. And he went mm-hmm. on in subsequent years and did, you know, more seasons of the, of the comic book. But um, so we, we made no attempt to sort of, develop a separate story right know, right the same characters and and that seemed to you know work pretty well and it played it into the fan base i mean one of the things that's interesting i discussed this with peter the other day is mtv kind of moved away obviously from those more dramatic things like eon and the max and the head right. yeah mm-hmm. yeah and the head was the only one that got two seasons and that was because it was a little more fun and accessible mm-hmm. but you know they just weren't getting you know they their fan base loves them, you know, to this day, their kids coming out of art school who would say that they remember seeing that stuff when they were little or, you know, or people right. at the studios. But I always compared a little like to the Velvet Underground, right? They never sold a lot of records, but <laughs> new bands. But they made a big yes. influence. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Getting back to Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies, right. uh, hmm. we're talking about controversies. Plenty of yeah. controversy in early days. Yeah. And granted, a lot of those early cartoons had things that were objectionable, especially to today's audience. But there was a thing called the Censored Eleven. Yeah. These 11 cartoons that were pulled or held back from syndication. For the most part, it was all because they were racist. Yeah. Yeah. There are, there are wartime things against the yeah. Japanese. Yeah. And there was a lot there of propaganda. Also, propaganda. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it was African mostly American. like, it was mostly African American stereotypes. Yeah. So sure. yeah. it was like cold right. black and the seven dwarves. And, yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Why did the it, Japanese guy with the big teeth and the glasses, why, what, what was the idea that Japanese were blind? I've never understood that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or the big teeth. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like exactly. it, it's the animated version of internment camps where it's almost like, OK, this is the enemy. This is what he looks like. And you cannot have yeah. any sort of sensitivity toward their identity. And it, it's amazing that I mean, I guess it's, it shouldn't be that surprising, you know, in hindsight, like anything shouldn't. But the things were so black and white back then. Yeah. You know? Well, and, and also understand, guys, that you know, whether we're talking about you know, leading up to World War II, World War II, and a little bit afterwards, you know, all of the studios did the propaganda stuff. They all did it. Yeah. You know, in fact, sure. did Disney, Disney won an Academy Award for an animated cartoon, which was like basically a propaganda film. You know, it was a product of the times. It's yeah. not necessarily something that Disney goes out of its way to advertise. No, none of those do. And in fact, the funny thing is, I remember there were certain Looney Tune cartoons I remember watching as a kid and you're watching it, and the, there's one Bugs Bunny cartoon specifically yeah. where the ending is so abrupt. And I was, as a kid, I never understood why. Why was that? It wasn't until I got into college and I was getting my bachelor's degree in, in animation, and I was able to see the cartoon complete. I had, I had the most wonderful teacher, Marty McNamara, at San Francisco State, and we showed us just the history of animation. And basically, a Bugs Bunny and these little pals of his all put on blackface, and they start singing the song right. yeah. at the very end. And of course, when I saw it the first time, I'm like, "Oh my god, oh, that's know, that horrifying!" Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. Um, there was a bunch of stuff that was edited um, out of those cartoons in the '60s just to try to make it more, 
But some of these, though, they couldn't. There was no way no. to do that. Oh, there was right, no right. way. There was absolutely no way. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you and, couldn't just tag it with "Don't try this at home" or something. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. By the way, you well, we're better that, than this now. You remember that? Beavis and, do you remember that Beavis and Butthead had a, a disclaimer at the beginning? Right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh-huh. Butthead are not real. You know. Uh, John, John, did, was, human, was, was that was that there at the beginning, or did you guys have to put that later on? Well, if if it wasn't there at the beginning, it was there very quickly. Uh, right. <laughs> I, I, I remember. I think I remember that there was one that was more tongue in cheek. You remember how South Park had this thing about the celebrity voices that they, they kind of mm-hmm. wasn't. Right. And I, I think we may have had to make it less tongue in cheek. It, okay. like it might have been uh, two iterations, but it's. It's a little <laughs> vaguely in, in prehistory. But, you know, I was thinking about in kids' cartoons, you know, all those shows were hosted when I was a kid. So we had Officer Joe Bolton in The Three Stooges, and we had Captain Jack in uh, Popeye, you know, in New York. And they w- would often have a little disclaimer thing of don't try these things at home. Ooh, okay, um, right. Don't tie anybody to a railroad track. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> don't don't I, drop an anvil on your brother. Don't stick yeah. okay. right under so, somebody's chair. So yeah. according to Wikipedia, the mm. first disclaimer was Beavis and Butthead are not real. They are stupid cartoon people completely <laughs> made up by this Texas guy whom we <laughs> hardly even know. <laughs> Beavis and Butthead are dumb, crude, thoughtless, ugly, sexist, self-destructive fools. But for some reason, the little wiener heads make us laugh. <laughs> wow, I hadn't heard that in a long yeah. time. And then it's and then it was changed to yeah. Beavis and Butthead Beavis are not role models. They're not even human. They're cartoons. Some of the things they do would cause a person to get hurt, expelled, arrested, possibly deported. To put it another way, don't try this at home, which yeah, yeah. Uh, is, that's cute, that, but I like the first one is so good. I, yeah. I think, though, that I have a feeling the reason it was changed was that, that Mike Judge was offended by how far it went. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, uh, and then, and then sort of trying to disown it, you know. Interesting. Like, well, uh, we don't know how, you know, uh, yeah. how we even got here. Somebody delivered I, I, a tape. You know? I see that. Yeah, right, I get that. Right. So it dialed back a little. I think David Felton, uh, who, who who was a Rolling Stone writer, who was at the time at fifty, was the oldest employee at MTV. And he, his his outgoing phone message was, "This is David Felton, the oldest employee at MTV. <laughs> if I don't get back to you. It might be because I'm having my nap." <laughs> uh, he, he was he, he was sort of a spiritual advisor, and you know he would sort of. Find help us find our way through some because he, you know, he was senior, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. comparatively senior, you know. Talking about racial insensitivity, I, I think the most controversial The Simpsons ever got was with uh, Apu, the character of Apu, which took a long time, yes, um, you know, to, yeah. to sort of reach reach the, the consciousness the where Hank is a, the yeah. tipping point. And I'm not claiming to be particularly, you know, sensitive about these things, but I, I always sort of wondered, even from the early days, when I, I remember this movie called Short Circuit about this robot where Fisher <laughs> Stevens, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Fisher <laughs> Stevens played in, uh, you know, an Indian American yeah. guy with this yeah. broad I accent. Mean, I'm like, well, well, how well, can like, you? How, how is that not stepping? Yeah, well, uh, but even up to, into the '70s and even early '80s, you had, still had people playing. You know, Asian character Peter Sellers and the, and the sixteen it, candles, the, the sixteen, that sixteen yeah. candles. That's yeah. exactly. Long, long Duck Dong. Right. You can't, yeah. Matt. You, right. Matt, you can't watch he, that. He was now. Asian. Though. It's he tough. Was Asian. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, yes, but is gross but broadly, exaggerations and you know. right. But yeah, it's right. just that funny that I mean, way back in the, you know the, the Charlie Chan movies in the thirties and forties, and then you still into the eighties, you we have you have that kind of Caucasian actors playing roles. I mean, I, it's kind of hard to believe, really. You know, Disney classics, you know, Lady and the Tramp had the Siamese cats. Uh, you have the, yeah. the, the Aristocats. They're even, even, uh, well, what was Aladdin the Aristocats? Famously, what, what, what was wrong in there? There's, there's a, there's the jazz cats, you know, right. are kind of, oh, kind okay. of portrayed maybe like African American, okay. but. Okay. Well, I know and, like and Peter Asian Pan. American, yeah. And Asian. Peter, yeah. Peter Pan for sure. With the, a, what the makes Native the red American. man red? But yes, right. yes. I mean that's yes. that's a lot. That's a but, lot I mean, of offensive just, in one like, song ra- title. Racial <laughs> racial humor was like a huge part of comedy. You know, yeah. unless of, you're of the, the person being made fun of. 
Yeah, and, that, I'm saying, and, like, and that's what changed, the... you know, yeah. is that I think, yeah. you know, because you look back at some of those early Merry Melodies and Looney Tunes, and if you look at them from a pure cartoon standpoint, a lot of them were really great. The, right, the thing that ruins them is the racial uh, yeah. stereotype stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. and and so, but the, but the problem was, it's like, oh, hey, oh, it was a different time. And we just thought this was funny at the time. Yeah, but I'm sure they did. Well, that's the thing about Song <laughs> yeah. of the South. Song of the South, of which is essentially a, a movie that Disney will never release, does have artistry in it, which is a beautiful classic Disney True. animated artistry. Yes. And, and a song that everybody knows the song, but doesn't even yeah. do the, the right. Now, yeah. Yeah. now for, for listeners who don't know what we're talking about, if you ever <laughs> went to Disneyland and went on a ride called Splash Mountain, yeah. where you yeah. see a uh, Br'er Fox, Br'er Rabbit, you know, that's the cartoon or that's the film that James is talking about. And, you know, as a kid, I remember seeing it in the movie theater, James. Yeah, and man, I, I was, I, uh, to me, I thought, Uncle Remus was, he was uh, like the guy who lived on the plantation, but, but he was like a neighbor or something. I, it <laughs> would totally went over me that, course, that he yeah. was a slave, you know, well, as, he's, as well, a slave. he's not a no, slave. He's not, he's not he's a slave. Right. Yeah. Man. But, but, at, at, <laughs> at the end of the day, I mean, I actually watched Song of the South recently with my stepdaughter and, um, you know, it, afterward we had a wow. discussion about it. Yeah, it was, okay. a, it was a boot. It was a bootleg. A bootleg. Okay. 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 And okay. Afterward That's we had a James Gonis, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> You're writing your letters. We had a discussion about discussion about. Did you have a Good. discussion about bootlegs too? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank your summons to remember. James Gonis. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, Go ahead. but basically, Go ahead, it, basically the takeaway was: look, there there is classic Disney like the, the artistry, way the, artistry in this. Yes. But the take the takeaway is that okay, we're white people. Unless you you happen to be an African American, there is no real way that you can ascertain purely what the effect is of this movie as yes. far as sensitivity goes. Right, right. Especially That's the takeaway, especially considering how many times. You have been portrayed in this way. Right. And there has to be a point where it's just like, what if it were you that was being made fun of in this way? And you and were the it, outsider. It's odd, too, when you think about the fact that in our culture, going back to the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, you know, we have so many uh, fantastic uh, musicians, singers, dancers, etc., right. who are African-American, you know, so there's plenty of people to be those characters or to, or, you know, right. Right. Yes. why are right. we parodying them? You know, certainly why are we having, you know, white people play? Yeah, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and, yeah. and really it's so true that when you do talk to those people, as the, you know, who will say, wow, I never saw anything that looked like me, you know. Mm. Uh, right. right. Well, yeah, like, but look, look, look you got to you got to give Disney some credit because they really have been striving to whether they they did oh, yeah. Mulan, which is an Asian character. Yeah, they now. did Pocahontas sure. yeah, and, yeah, and sure. what they've done with these classics. You know, a lot of people were really pushed out of shape. They, they've put these disclaimers at the front that, that kind of say, look, you know, we know in this day and age, you know, this some of the stuff in here isn't cool. I don't know exactly the, the, the phraseology that they use, but they basically give a warning that. These were made at a certain time. So, you know, yeah, that that sequence in Peter Pan, what makes a red man red is is it's like cringeworthy. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. but yeah. there's so many beautiful things in Peter Pan that are so True. spectacular and gorgeous and beautiful. It's one of our favorite rides uh, at, at Disneyland. It is one of my um, favorite rides. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I will say this, like Disney, Disneyland, they're actually changing that whole Splash Mountain thing to be more of a. Yeah, a princess and the frog, and my, right. I, it's funny because I talked to my daughter about this. My daughter is so excited because she went on Splash Mountain. She didn't know about the the characters as much, and I explained it. But she's much more excited about Tiana and her journey and the little frog and and the crocodile and stuff. And that thing's going to be spectacular when they get it done. Well, well that's yeah. the other thing about Disneyland is a lot of those rides are, I mean, Mr. Toad, a lot of kids today don't know Mr. Toad. You know? Right, right. Well, that, that, that's the thing about Splash Mountain is that yeah. of all of all things to base a ride on. Really? That's it, the well, one? <laughs> well, look, I, I, I think in, in and again, in fairness of Disney, those all those characters used to be in a different ride, the Carousel of Tomorrow or something like right. that. And, right. and, and America, they sings pull, America sings, yeah. America sings. They pull them out and they go, well, we got all these things. What do we do? Hey, 
our splash ride. We'll put them in there. It was almost like an afterthought. And then it's like, it makes no sense. No, no, exact. Yes, Sean. Yes. (laughs) And and look, and look, guys, not, we're, I mean, we're talking about, you know, Disney trying to clean things up. You know, we on Pirates of the Caribbean, we just heard that the woman that's being sold in the hot red dress, she's been made into a female pirate now. OK, <laughs> well, well, <laughs> hey, that works for me, too. And, and, now, you know, <laughs> and actually, they're like, I think, auctioning off food or something like that. Right, I guess. Right. You know, they, yeah. they cleaned that's up all, certain. Yeah, it's, it's, all the that time, fine, though. It's, a, yeah. it's that fine line, though, between we're going to make this palatable to a sensitive audience than having a ride that doesn't reflect at all what pirates were like. I mean, you know, right, the one right. thing I liked about pirates was that it was, they seemed like they were scary and terrible, and, you know, <laughs> yes, but I don't make remember. them lovable now. Or? Well, well, hey, look, what you want to see our pirates actually raping and pillaging. Is that what you no, want to see on the I, ride? <laughs> Larry, I want something in the middle. I want it. That'll be the that'll be well, the Quentin Tarantino land. <laughs> <laughs> the real oh, pirates. hey, where's that? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, maybe in the Vista but, but like, there's a lot of space in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there you go. There you but, go. But it's like it's all a part of the time. Like even like you know when Hanna Barbera, they would do sh- animated shows that were on in prime time for not just for kids, like the Flintstones and Johnny Quest. You know, right. they aired in prime time, so adults were watching those too. Flintstones did a cigarette commercial. Fred, oh, yeah. Fred Flintstone and Bar, you know, Winston cigarettes, you know, and that was fine. Winstone. Winstone. <laughs> <laughs> does anybody does anybody remember Wait Till Your Father Gets Home? Did, uh, was it Tom Bosley? Did the- oh my yeah. God. Yeah. And didn't, that, like- didn't that start on Love American Style? Oh, did it? I think you're right. Oh, I think you're right. Yeah. Short? Yeah. Yeah. They, oh, interesting. Yeah. Because Just I like Happy Days. Was- because I thought that it kind of was all in the family, you know, watered down or something. It definitely well, the had that pushing the, the envelope yeah. for an animated primetime right. show. And, the, and yeah. the Flintstones was kind of a version of the Honeymooners. The Honeymooners, right. All right. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And which Top is, that's kind of a version of Bilko. Bilko, right. Yeah, right, right, right. But Maybe the Flintstones so should have been yeah. controversial for so many reasons. <laughs> First of all, it accepts <laughs> creationism, right? <laughs> well, that's true. Right. That's true. <laughs> Dinosaurs are living with people. Oh my gosh, that's, that's right. horrible. That's right. But you know, it, it's funny. Not. I think we are also. We've got to a place where, when you were a kid, you like something a lot, and then as you grow a little older, maybe you start poking fun of it. And one of the things I'm I'm talking about specifically, something that I love that they have produced some stuff that's controversial, and that's Robot Chicken. And that, mm-hmm. you know, oh, yeah. you know, a different style. It's like stop, stop motion, motion animation right. with a little action figures that we all love. Yes. But they've gone so far as look, I, I've i seen these Dora the Explorer things, which caused a lot, it got a lot of flack because I remember Dora the Explorer was really popular, especially with my kid yeah. growing up. And when I saw Dora the Explorer and some of the, she was getting very upset at the map <laughs> that wanted her to go in a certain direction. And she would say, no, map. I want to go this way. No, oh, I think we got to go this way. She would get all upset. And I know people got upset about it, it was controversial because it was, it was you know, hey, you're, t- a beloved you're taking this project. Yes, a beloved thing. But then it's like, you know what, guys? I love Star Wars and they would make fun of Star Wars, too. In fact, sure. uh, Seth Green got permission from George Lucas to basically poke right, fun right. at Star Wars. And it's all out of love in a way. And yet, you know? and yet. Making fun of monsters, not a <laughs> not a thing that you go for, Larry. Well, your silence speaks volume. <laughs> Controversial cartoon. You're, you're, you're I'm just faceted man. Yes, I, yes, I uh, am. Well, also another animator I think we should mention for talking about controversial animation cartoons is uh, Ralph Bakshi. Oh gosh, sure. he, he was a big big deal in the seventies. I mean, with Fritz the Cat. Uh, Which was an X, it was an X-rated. It was the X-rated. first X-rated animated yeah. film. Right, and, and you know when, was, when my dad took uh, me and my friends on my birthday to see that in the theater. Oh, that was oh, a shock. Oh Wait, serious? really? No, oh, you eleven? No. <laughs> oh, but can you imagine? I'll bet you that happened. I bet you're like, oh, it's a cartoon. Yeah, really, really. Well, I thought you would go to a drive-in or something like that. Kids, get in the back. You know, kind of a thing. Wow, that's or, true. Uh, yes, get yeah. in the truck. Yeah, in, in, um, in, in New York. Of course, because he was an East Coast guy, 
everyone, you know, had their moment of working for him. He'd often fire you if he, you know, just was in a bad mood. In yeah, fact, really. I heard he was kind of like, He's volatile. Little, yeah, yeah, a little bit. Oh, yeah. Chris, Chris Pernosky, who... Um, uh, oh, yeah, Chris. Animated, yeah, animated the... Uh, he was the director of the um, the Rob Zombie sequence, the, the hallucination sequence in the first Beavis movie. Uh, oh, wow. He worked, you know, you would think if anybody could have worked with Ralph Bakshi, it would have been Chris, but he got fired after like, three days or something. Really? Really? Oh, really? Yeah, he's such wow. a, he seems like a pretty easygoing guy. Oh, you mean Chris? Yeah. Chris was. Yeah, exactly. But it seemed but, like but, Bakshi huh? just invited controversy and, Well, he you was know. just a, he, you know, he was a tyrant and, and, you know, he was, I mean, I think he was a guy, I mean, I've seen him uh, at talk. I, I saw him at a thing where John Chris Felusi introduced him and they were chatting and he seems like a sweet old teddy bear. But, you know, when he was young, I think he was acting out, you know, he was, yeah. he was mm-hmm. making a cartoon, you know, of a dirty cartoon. Sure. Um, right. But, but, you know, and also, I mean, the techniques that he brought into it of using live action plates, he would shoot in color and. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, right. Uh, uh, rotoscoping. Uh, rotoscoping. Yeah. 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 That was a new thing. Like, yeah, I remember seeing, uh, well, yeah. And um, the Lord of the Rings uh, did that. Yeah, you know, animated Lord of the Rings, but like I mean, I, I love Wizards. I mean, I think Wizards is really yeah, me too. Really cool, and American yeah. Pop is pretty cool. But like the early yeah. ones, like Coonskin and Heavy Traffic, they dealt with a lot of you know and, and, subjects to begin with. And Coonskin is one of those films that a surface examination of it, it would seem like it would be this racist thing, but I mean, he's defended it for all these years that it's not that. It's actually a, the opposite. You know, it's commentary. And, right. you know, a Barry White's in it. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. interesting because oh, this stuff also was taking place during the whole era of the black exploitation film. True. Right. 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 And, and live action filmmaking, you know, that was gritty. And so I was just watching the one that Isaac Hayes stars in uh, today on Criterion. I think he's called characters like Truck Taylor. Or Truck-, Truck Turner. Oh, yeah. Oh, Truck Turner. Turner. Yeah. And yeah. you know that is just all hoes and pimps, and you know yeah. shoot 'em ups and car chases around uh, downtown LA, and the N word is used like four hundred times. Of yeah. course, by, mostly by black characters, right, 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 not exclusively by black characters. You know? Yeah, when white characters say it, they get shot. You know. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Uh, and one thing and, we do have to point out about Coonskin, though, is that it okay. is the black exploitation parody of Song of the South. Ah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> interesting <complicated>. nice <laughs> but uh, you know i just want to point out sean you, you mentioned something about rotoscoping it wasn't necessarily new rotoscoping had been around a while for for listeners it's basically animating over live action that had been around for right. a while but it was bocce's way of just using it throughout the entire film practically yeah. i mean that was a one way to cut costs but sean he there's probably one of the most famous controversial cartoons that he did was <laughs> yeah. uh mighty mouse the new adventures and we've the new we've, version the 80s. The new, yes yes <laughs> we've we talked about this uh before it's i believe it's from 1987 the littlest tramp and this caused a lot of problems there was a sequence when mighty mouse has a flower there's a flower and he sniffs it and this white powder stuff goes up into his nose now yeah yeah when you watch it, 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 it to some people like if you're a kid it's like okay so he's smelling the flower and oh it gives him this power to yeah. parents they were flipped out oh my god this is promoting cocaine you know and yeah, yeah. and and i remember when this happened, because I, I loved those episodes. I love those Mighty Mouse episodes. There was a bunch of adult humor in there. Right. And when that well, one what happened. What do you expect when you get the director of well, Coonskin and Harry Travis to do a Saturday morning cartoon? <laughs> right. he was interv- I saw this interview and he was getting so upset and so mad <laughs> at these darn stupid parents. And, right. and, and it's like, you're right, Sean. When you're the director of Fritz the cat and all these other things, you've already set this thing up. You yeah, you've kind of right. set yourself up to be, of course, they're looking at everything that you do. And so the show got canceled, you know? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. You know yeah. When you think about when that was, it was simultaneously to Pee Wee's Playhouse and uh, John Chris Felusi. I was just going to say, Rand Stimpy, Stimpy, yeah. Was on that, you know, and, and uh, you know, all those people are making the parodying something almost from their childhoods, right? You know, yeah, yeah. Mouse, but mm. now we're going to push the envelope with Mighty Mouse. I mean, I just happened upon that Mighty Mouse accidentally. I think it was on after Pee Wee's, which I was watching. 
And I was yeah. just like, wow, this is unbelievable. You know, <laughs> and, but, but I felt like it was for me, you know, mm. right, right. on Mighty Mouse, you know, right. didn't do much except, you know, I mean, that was a very formulaire show. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then Pee Weaves was a parody of any, you know, Captain Kid Kangaroo. Or yeah. Something. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, right. And, you know, and, uh, and that's the weird area you get into with stuff that's more adult. You know, if you go to see any improv group in L.A., half the stuff is going to be them improving stuff from their childhood, only now twisted. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what we do. You know, that's well, right. I mean, and then the kids don't. Kids are kind of like, "What are we parodying here? I don't even know the, what the original was." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> I mean, talk about twisted, like you know, Ren and Stimpy, John, John Chris Falusi had. Plenty of controversy of his own. I mean, well, he got yeah. into trouble a lot, but that show was so twisted and wacko and yeah. so and great. disgusting I mean, at times, Sean. But, it's but, disgusting. But, real, but like little things, like I mean, I, I can't remember what it was. There was one episode where like they go, they're going door to door, and they knock on this one guy's door. Some little character answers, and it's like this big burly guy with this little guy, and you can tell the little guy is really scared of the big guy, and, and the little guy goes like. Call the police! <laughs> yeah, like, you, you, just, you can read so much into that. What's going on between these two? I mean, I mean, it's just, that show is genius. And I know. Oh but, my but, god! But, I forget yeah, exactly what, happened, what happened. You know, yeah, but, yeah, that was for us. And, but then but he, I had a friend who was teaching first grade at that time, and he <laughs> said that you know the kids were all coming in doing the voices. <gasps> oh my god! No. I mean, yeah, it was Bean yeah. Bean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, because it's a cartoon. Right, exactly. You know? Right. It's those those character. cartoons made me laugh so hard. Yeah, the first they were time so I saw them. Dark and the most I'd and... laugh in like the modern era yeah, yeah. cartoon. You know. I, I, I you know, I even felt that way about the early uh SpongeBob. I remember I, Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah I absolutely. Was, I was living in this apartment. I would come home from work and I would I would come on and I would be just laying on the living room floor watching you know, kind of with drool dripping out of my mouth. It's like, it's <laughs> funny, but I'm not laughing. I'm just drooling. And I, and I one moment thinking to myself, my God, this is exactly what I did when I was eight. You know, <laughs> <laughs> cartoons would put you in a zone, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, there was, they, they got in trouble too. I was just reading one episode of uh, SpongeBob got in trouble because it was, uh, I think SpongeBob got fired, or Patrick got fired, or one of them, and so they both decided to quit their jobs and just hang out. And they got under fire because it was celebrating unemployment, <laughs> like, like not working. So people were going out. Come it was like, on, it was like fun employment. Like they were just being lazy bums and not working. And the people, the people, the parents wrote in like, "No, you have to work." I'm like, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> but um, is every piece of entertainment at that, yeah. you, especially when you're at that age, have to be yeah. like this? thing of like this is how you live <laughs> well I, th- I think along those lines we have to take a moment to talk about the elephant in the room or would that be the skunk Dumbo? in the the skunk in the room and that would be Pe- uh, Pepe Le Pew uh, sure. going back to Warner oh, Brothers yeah. 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 It generated a lot of controversy a year or two ago cancel culture uh, targeted Pepe Le Pew which was this Warner Brothers cartoon skunk uh, that was a French Sort of a French caricature of a womanizer, right? Uh, a very rapey womanizer that would go after <laughs> cats and not not take no for an answer from the cats. Yeah, it's like the stalker, the stalker yeah. skunk. Right. They have a whole bit about this in my act. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, the thing about it, it, it seems to me like there's appropriate sensitivity, and then it can go a little bit over the line. And in this case, the the point to me is that Pepe Le Pew was never held up as any sort of a role model. Indeed, no. the the cats that he right. was terrorizing were looking at him like he's a freak. Like this guy <laughs> right, is right. a rapist. He's a rapist skunk. There was never any question about that. <laughs> yeah, we're not portraying him called... as like a, a perfect yeah. gentleman. I think no. the character was originally called rapist skunk, wasn't it? <laughs> no, 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 he wasn't. Here's, here's the other thing too about Happy Le Pew is that he didn't just rape. He raped another species. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and look, yeah. I think we're being a little harsh. He would, he, he would, would like, he would say nice things. Pursue you people. Know, yeah, oh, pursue. Oh, that makes it okay, huh? Pursue well, 
<laughs> yeah, it was I'm completely... just, hey, hey, Pepe Le Pew. You got was, some fucked up n- rules, hey, Larry. Listen, but, but, man. But the point hey, is, though, the point is, no, though, I, I was not a kid. fan of Pepe Le Pew. That's but, what I want to say. Larry, I was not a fan. As a, as a kid, when you watched it, did you start? Do you think in those terms? Like you weren't like, oh, I mean, it was just a fun. Either it was, either it was funny to you or not, but. You you, you empathize know. with the cat with the right. victim. Oh, yes. right. was I did. Yes. I did. And then I goes, gosh, hopefully this cartoon will be over soon. And we can get to <laughs> yeah. anvils being dropped on heads. Right. That's yeah. what I wanted to see. What, 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 was, what was your what was your take on it, Matt? Well, I'm that was curious. one of them, is that he's doing another species. But look, it seemed like this was fine. And then two years ago, somebody went, wait a minute. You know, like yeah. all, it the, one all person this time, like, it was like, it was, it's right. completely ridiculous. Right. It's not right. even mm. a human being. It's a cat and a it's, skull. It's, it's, it's animated. And it's, it's animated. Like, oh, it's all Mel yeah. Blanc. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, uh, well, there's but, nothing I, but wrong I agree with... with you, Larry. It's not, it wasn't my favorite cartoon. Yeah. Right, right. Well, you know, uh, one of the things for me was... I was never, as a kid, that big a fan of uh, Wile E. Coyote or Tom and Jerry because I like funny dialogue. You know, I I yeah. I would I would prefer, for instance, Rocky and Bullwinkle, and certainly Bugs. Oh yeah, yeah. because I, yeah, right. yeah. I wanted I wanted jokes. You know, and right, yeah, and, yeah. You know, the Jay Ward stuff was great. They were really well written. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And they were written by all those guys that went on to like MTM, Mary Tyler Moore Productions. You know, they were right. Yeah. They right. Come, writers but and 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 you know i i think i have a lot more appreciation for wiley coyote and and the classic tom and jerry as an adult than i did then for some mm-hmm. reason i don't know why mm-hmm. for some reason i got bored just watching them one I'm kind of, joke, yeah one I'm kind of with you joke after another yeah yeah you know. and and didn't they have to remove in those old cartoons to play him again they had to remove like tom had like a mammy owner oh yeah yeah just yeah poor yeah exactly because oh yeah that's right a, she, That's she right. clearly the maid, I guess. Yeah, couldn't do that. So, uh, but yeah. the other Warner Brothers character that I had a I had a bit my act about was Yosemite Sam. Oh, sure. <laughs> what's sure. wrong? What's wrong with Yosemite Sam? He's got He's a gun tr- yeah. killer. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I said I mean, my bit was okay. <laughs> he's like the first cartoon redneck, <laughs> and it was just like, yeah. oh, I hate rabbits. <laughs> and Jews too. <laughs> oh, no, he doesn't say that. No, he does. No, Larry, he doesn't say that because it's a, that. it's a joke. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That that is I mean, correct. I mean, I, I think all those guys were playing golf on their lunch hour, and you know how the, all those cartoons looked like they were kind of shot on greens or something. You know, <laughs> yes, <laughs> rolling, rolling hills and, and, and you know the bugs is hiding in a hole. You know. And, right, and, 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 and but you know, uh, all the, something like Yosemite Sam. I mean, that was the era of popularity of TV westerns. You right, know? Exactly. right, mm-hmm. totally. right. Totally. Right. Sense you're going to make something. I mean, what we all ought to be trying to do is figuring out, you know, what can we make fun of that's current. You know, we can't do it. now we can't make fun of anything anymore. That's the problem. Yeah, well, well, or everything. How can, how or everything. Yeah, you're nothing or everything. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, once again, you brought up Robot Chicken. There are yes. so many jokes in that that I don't know how they don't get canceled or, you know, because somehow right. in this format, it's OK. And yeah, I think right, that's right. the key is creating a safe room. It's the same thing mm. with stand up comedy is that there was a time when you go into a stand up club and that was the safe zone and everybody knew it was a joke. And so this was an area where you could maybe, you know, uh, skirt the edge of taste. <clears throat> And boundaries right and get away with it and it wasn't like what a terrible person because half the time when you're yeah. doing a joke like that you're almost creating a character you know yeah. it's like yeah. i'm pretending that i'm this stupid that i believe this right whatever yeah. you know or, whatever or like comedic thing yeah or like when mainstream culture try you know tries to kind of make good with it or like I just think of the 1990 TV animated special cartoon all-stars to the rescue you know, <laughs> to teach you when they got all the different trademarked characters, Bugs Bunny, Alf, Garfield, Muppet Babies, Alvin the Chipmunk, all to teach kids that drugs are bad, which is fine. But like, you wonder how much did it, did it, you know, did it make an effect? Or, Cause now you watch it and it's funny, you know, cause it's like, so, yeah. but I but learned, just, I learned something. Well, it's worth, it's worth. What did just you learn? Seeing, don't do drugs. <laughs> and that's it's when you learned it. it? 
<laughs> it's worth it just to see uh, the personification of drugs voiced by George C. Scott. <laughs> yeah. A character named Smoke, which is kind of, kind of amazing. But, I, learned, but, um, I learned that when you have a, a government-sponsored PSA that you can get licensing from every major <laughs> animation studio. <Yeah. laughs> and George Bush <laughs> yeah. and Barbara Bush uh, like did the intro for it. Yeah, it was pretty Cause, insane. Because that'll bring the kids in. Yeah. <laughs> but the best, the best line, the best quotable line in that movie, there's a moment where Bugs Bunny says, what's this, a joint? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. What's this, a joint doc? No? <laughs> no, I don't know. No, no. Just I'm gonna make I'm gonna make I'm gonna make that my ringtone. I think <laughs> to, to yeah. see to see Bugs Bunny making a pipe out of a carrot. <laughs> it just seems so natural. It does. <laughs> oh wow. yeah. Oh, we have fun. Uh, you know, th these are these are funny. I just wanted to uh, throw out a, a few like maybe controversial oh. cartoons. And, you know, some of them are done by by people I really love and admire. One is um, from Bill Kopp, who's a Academy Award winning director. Uh, he did Tales from the Crypt from 1996, The Third Pig, which is actually it caused a lot of problems because you take the traditional story of the three little pigs and the third little pig gets tried for murder for murdering his two <laughs> brothers and it's really dark and twisted and i yes it's tales from the crypt it's like horror and stuff but it actually caused some problems one of my one of my other favorite animators and john i'm sure you know bill plimpton amazing oh, yes. amazingly yeah, talented yes. yeah. and huh. and uh, he you know he's been nominated for academy awards for many anim his animated shorts but he did this film we've talked about it before but it is it is so sick it is so twisted and and that is his film from 2001 called Mutant Aliens. Now, yeah. imagine it's like you're an astronaut, you're shot into space and uh, you have like these, uh, you come across these asteroids, has these strange creatures in it and they all come on to the ship and he goes away for 20 years and comes back and he has all these new creatures. Well, where did all these new creatures come from? What's uh. he been doing on this spaceship all this time? <laughs> well, he had some needs. He had to like, uh. he had, yes, you get where this is going. I got it. And it's, Yes, it's it's right up your alley, Matt. I mean, it's the, I mean, I mean, you would love it. Mutant aliens, and there's also this animator who I just think is brilliant. His name is Don Hertzfeld, and back in 1998, he was uh, going to UC Santa Barbara, and he did this his class project, his class animated film called Billy's Balloon. It sounds like a very cute little title, a very simple stylized drawing, almost stick figure like where this little boy has this little balloon and the balloon has a mind of its own to the point where it attacks this kid and other kids. And when a parent comes walking by, the balloon just looks like it's normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Totally normal. And yeah. then the parent walks away and the balloon will start bang, 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 bang. It, it's, it's disturbing. And it's twisted and it's hilarious. And apparently – he uh, sent it in to, you know, that was his, his, uh, he, his project. He got a B on it. He got a B, but yet the film wins all these awards all over the country, <laughs> which is hilarious. So then he went on to do something, which I think is so funny. You can find this on YouTube. It's called Rejected by Don Hertzfeld. It was nominated for in 2001 for Academy Award nominee, best animated short. It's basically the concept guys is he was hired by the Family Learning Channel to produce promotional segments for their network. And you go, oh, that's really nice. Well, it, it, it's not really accurate, but he shows these really twisted, disturbing cartoons, one of which it's best described as um, everybody dance or these little puffy cloud characters are everybody dance. Doo, 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 doo. And they're all having fun. Everything seems great and fun. And all of a sudden, one of them starts to be bleeding through his asshole. <laughs> oh, no, I was going to say there's just tons and tons and tons of blood. <laughs> oh my god, it's 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 one of those things. It's if you again, it's rejected. Uh, you can find it on YouTube, and it's 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 one of many little cartoons. And I strongly recommend it. It is it is sick. It's twisted. It's controversial. And I, but I, if you like that kind of humor, I think you'd love it. It also that kind of reminds me of like, uh, do you guys ever watch uh, Happy Tree Friends? Oh yeah, sure. Oh yeah, yeah. And that yeah. Figured, talk about yeah. violence. Yeah, because yeah. it was all these sort of like normal, happy little scenes that would end with the limbs getting chopped off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Out of, out of the bone. 
Yeah. But it was natural. And, it was organic in the storytelling. <laughs> but it, but it was, uh, one of the interesting things with Don, you know, is he would not be co-opted, you know, because he became such a successful bad boy of animation. Yeah. That, and suddenly, like I was producing a lot of animated commercials at the time. All of a sudden, everybody wanted you to either get him or parody him. Really? You know, yeah, because that that stick figure thing. He was. Yeah. Saying, I, I produced a thing later uh, called Dick Figures, which was a. <laughs> and, 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 and it was two buddies, you know, who are stupid, and and you know, do all, just all kinds of crazy stuff. And we were getting for two or three years there. We were getting. We put a new cartoon up and get four million views in the in Thursday Friday. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Wow! And then we eventually did a movie, which we serialized. You could either buy. For five bucks, you could have the whole movie, or you had to wait and get it in twelve segments. <laughs> but uh, you know, it was very much in that same kind of very simple, simple stick figure. Right. But, you know, uh, but um, and the audience was like identical to the Beavis audience. It was like yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it, the content, it's it's clever, it's funky, it's weird, yeah. and it's just hilarious. Yeah, Don's stuff is great. Yeah, absolutely. And then he had a for a while. Uh, he and Mike Judge together were doing an animation show that went that did the theatrical run you know very much like the old sick and twist oh. but that whole thing seems to be gone now that theatrical touring theatrical mm. thing yeah. you got more you have what another you, one well, well I, you know there the, there was a i don't know if people have heard the story it's something that you'll never be able to see but maybe you've heard of this john that back in the 40s there were a couple of animators who worked at disney that thought it would be funny to uh, they late at night, they worked on this pencil sketch of Mickey and Minnie, uh -huh. and they actually had them having sex. Really? And then, wow. of course, they they filmed it, and then they showed it to the animators, and the animators were dying. They were laughing. It was so funny, and they thought, you know, we got to show this to Walt. Walt's gonna, gonna love it. <laughs> so they bring Walt in the room. As the story that I've heard uh -huh. is, so he comes on in, he sits there with everybody, they screen it for him. And he starts laughing. He starts, they're all, oh, this is great. And he goes, this is great. Who did this? And they go, oh, it was so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so. He had them fired oh, that second. Yeah, wow, they were kicked wow. out. And I think he called other studios. I'd never have these guys ever work for you again. Yeah. So those guys. So is, that like, is that kind of a myth, myth or do you think it's true? Is it true? Oh, this is, yeah. I, so well, somewhere I've heard this. Isn't there well, a saying? Isn't there a saying that's like, don't fuck with the mouse. Like that's a thing. With his name. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, don't, yeah. you don't mess with Mickey yeah. Mouse. Yeah. yeah. And he, uh, he slipped, he slipped for a Mickey. Ah, ah, hey, ah. All right. uh, <laughs> and then along popular cartoons, there's the, uh, from Jim Reardon from 86, bring me the head of Charlie Brown. And if you can <laughs> find this on YouTube, you would love it, James, because you, it's, it's basically like a pencil test. The whole thing is a pencil test. And the voices, they're nothing. They don't sound like the characters, <laughs> but they are spot on. And basically, it's like all of the Peanuts characters are trying to kill Charlie Brown. And then it just – and then Charlie Brown just snaps. And what he does is very violent and tasteless. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, yes, you can love find it. that on YouTube. It, I'm it, fits with that. It, it fits with his character. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. you know, it's it's, yeah. it's funny, Matt. It's like after a while, when you're getting the rocks for Halloween, you're getting yeah, turned down by the little, you know, little the football, the football. I, I mean, oh yeah. my! I mean, yeah. Uh, but I I would hope that he would find it within himself to like take a deep breath, get some help, and then he'd be okay. <laughs> you go to but, the psychiatrist booth. Just yes, you know. but but in this one, bring me the head of Charlie Brown. You guys might get a kick out of it. Oh, sounds very hilarious. controversial. Hey, yeah. what, what did you guys think about Family Guy? Like, were you guys fans or? I couldn't watch it on and off. I never really yeah. uh, got sometimes that completely into it. Sometimes it seemed like they would do a joke and then they'd beat the hell out of it. I and, agree. And for, for example, there's a sequence which was very controversial, too, when uh, Peter Griffin fights this chicken giant chicken and they fight and they fight and they fight and it goes on for a long time to the point where it i mean it's not really that funny anymore and then at the end they go so what are we fighting for what are we? and it was yeah. it was kind of dumb and what i don't like is when they they kind of hammer 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 <laughs> well, that one joke yeah it was also to me after 
I mean, I know like our friend Wally Winger did a lot of voice stuff. Yes, it, right? he does. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. It, it, I, I watched it regularly in the beginning, but after a while, it, it, to me, it kind of became just a series of pop culture references. You yeah. know, like it was yeah. like nothing but that. Like, it, you know, it was. There was it, also it, a lot of copying. Like it wouldn't be a joke. It would just be a recreation of something. Yes. Yeah. Yes. With, yes. with it, those it wasn't characters. Like writing, right. It wasn't writing as much as just like throwing this reference, throwing this, I, you know. I will say this, though. Family Guy is responsible for a very famous uh, lawsuit, and that has to do with they took the song uh, When You Wish Upon a Star and kind of changed it around to say When You Wish Upon a Jew. It, it's like, you know, it's a, he, he was trying to find a Jewish person to help him with his accounting. And, you know, <laughs> yes, that's tasteless and whatnot. But but what happened was Fox and the Family Guy people, they were sued. They were sued. And of course, if you're Fox, it's like, well, shit, we've got all the money. Well, yeah, we'll take this to the court. And they won because it was a parody. It was a parody. (laughs) And so that law has been written up. So, um, for the book, oh, so, so that was kind of like the yeah, thing that started yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know if yeah. it necessarily started, but it was it's a, it's it a was famous a, case within the past like twenty years. That. Yeah, right. I, I always I always thought American Dad was funnier than Family. I never Dad. saw American. I just Dad. love the fact that they resuscitate Paul Lind as the squid or whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I miss I I liked Paul Lind growing up, and I sort of miss that voice, you know. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I appreciate that. Well, and I think Seth was a fan of so much classic stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but uh, you know, I was going to say one uh, years ago, I went to see Seth talk in an auditorium. I, I think it was a theater on Wilshire somewhere, and Bill Maher interviewed Seth, and people were lined up like they were going to see, you know, the Ramones that all come back to life or something. <laughs> I mean, there were just hundreds and hundreds of twenty somethings to see Seth just sit in a chair and be interviewed by Bill Maher. I mean, a thousand people, you yeah, know, wow. it was not, it, uh, you know, it blew away like the, you know, the, the big room at Comic-Con. Right, know. right. But, you know, interestingly, I, when I was at uh, MTV every year, I would go up and see the senior films at RISD. And, mm-hmm. you know, when, when you went to see the senior films at RISD, for the most part, they were like somebody had wove, cut film and strips and woven it together, or someone had animated sand yeah. Or, you know, yes. So really oh, right. Like very, experimental stuff. Very yeah. experimental. I, I saw a lot of that. Yeah. yeah. But uh, one. So one year, you know, amidst all that, you know, I'm seeing sand and woven and optical printed. All of a sudden, this guy sticks in his tape, and it's like, "Hey, how you doing?" Know, you know, and it was it was Seth's student film, and <laughs> he was a total anomaly at RISD. And and you know, I, and I, and I was giving critiques, and I said, "Well, first of all." It's the first RISD film I've ever seen with lip sync. You know, you know, I don't know who's watching that. We're not teaching that here, you know. And and I said, and I'm not I'm not sure if it's an MTV project, but this is going to sell somewhere, you know. Mm-hmm. And of course, he went to work at Hanna Barbera, which was really the right place, mm-hmm. you know, in terms of the. Uh, uh, and he and he worked on two or three shows there before he got uh, his show. And his show was just exactly what was in his senior film. You know, I have really. tremendous respect for him. And and oh, yeah, I think there yeah. is a lot of yeah. funny stuff in the family guy. Oh, I love some great I love, stuff. I just, yeah. I, I love uh, Stewie yeah. Griffin. I think yeah, is yeah. hilarious. Yeah. And also just his story of having this thing die and then come back to life again <clears throat> is so uh, uplifting. Yeah. And then he went on to do the Orville, which in my opinion yeah. is the only real Star Trek out there now. <laughs> right. So uh, I'm, I'm a fan, but, uh, but that yeah. was one that I just felt like I wish there was a little bit more of a, instead of recreating something a little bit more of an opinion, you know? Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. But clearly, I mean, I'm, I'm in the minority and people love that show and, uh, and I like it. I just South park is a little bit more where I live. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Yeah. I will say that like whenever I'm in a hotel room and I don't have access to, you know, TiVo and family guy always seems to be on. It's always on. (laughs) And that's, that's like the only time I watch family guy and it's hit and miss and some, some episodes I really enjoy. And I think to myself, maybe I should like catch up on all the seasons. And I think, Wait a minute. I don't have time to get this like 30 yeah. seasons already. Know, this is just, just, forever. <laughs> just go out of town. Yeah. Just go, <laughs> yeah. go to a hotel. Yeah. And- yeah. Live there for a month. Yeah. 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 Well, this has been great. It has it been. Has. Great. It's been amazing. It's been a, lot of fun. It's a, very, a very animated discussion. 
Oh, that should have been from James. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John, I want to thank you so much for being yes. with us, man. Yeah. You're, you're such a delight. I just love hearing all your stories, man. Yeah. You're, you're just I amazing. miss you. Yeah. Uh, you too, Matt. And I appreciate it. I'm enjoying getting to know all of you and hearing your sort of different points of view. And, and uh, you know, we're all fans, you know. And, yes. and, yeah. Uh, yeah. And we are. Are stuff. All the people we're talking about, one of the things I love about people in animation is they are fans, you know. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and they're all, a, you know, a conglomeration of influences. I think animation people are, or at least my experience has been, they're a lot of fun. That's what I've found. Yeah, how could know, they not be, be right? Larry Strode. Hey, hey, oh, Mr. <laughs> hey. Juggle. Hey, well, I, I don't know about me, but, you know, the, <laughs> the majority of the people I've met within the animation world have just been an absolute delight. I also, Larry, like people from San Francisco State. Seems to be like it was a cool <laughs> school. <laughs> it, well, yes, but but trust me, man. But going there, there's a lot of those the sand and the weaving and the optical. There was a lot of that too. You know, <laughs> I remember San Francisco. Getting, well, you know, and I kind of I don't want to say I stuck out like a sore thumb because I was Mister Hollywood, and I'm going. Don't you guys want to work for in this as a do as a living? <laughs> you know, but but uh, yeah, I had a great time there. I'd, uh, Great, great instructors, a great group of people I went to school with, and I had a lot of fun. Cool. So, John, uh, yeah. do you have anything right now that you're doing that you'd like to plug? Tell us about Something what you're doing. Out. Yeah. Well, if it's not funny, you know, it's but it's interesting. <laughs> I've, been, uh, it's okay. I've been working with some folks who are from the documentary world on a short about uh, a white supremacist uh, murder in Portland wow. in the late 80s, where it led to a some white supremacists clubbed and killed a black grad student from Africa. He was going for a doctorate. And Tom Metzger, who was ran one Tom Metzger, the, yeah. Yeah. He had had inspired these these kind of uh, skinhead types in Portland. And he ended up it ended up going to court. Mm-hmm. And Tom Metzger ended up paying millions of dollars to this guy's family who who was mm-hmm. killed. And mm-hmm. and he had a young he had a young son who came over from Africa and was brought to the trial as sort of like, this is, you know, he was a nice man who had a son. Here he is. <laughs> and and he's now an airline pilot. For one wow. Of, for wow. Airline. wow. But, uh, but uh, because there was not a lot of footage, there was some footage from the trial and some footage of Metzger, we created uh, several minutes of animation. Oh, wow. So I like embellish the whole story. Yeah, exactly. And it, it, I think it reminds me the most of, there was a film a couple of years ago about Malalia, Malala, the the girl who was shot in the face. Yes, they did a lot of rec- recreation of her uh, childhood. So we did that. I did a, an animator from USC named Greg Garay, who's terrific. And uh, we're you know we're just getting it ready. We're in post now and adding music, getting ready to wow. you know, hopefully get it out to festivals. That's uh, cool. And then other than that, I'm still in the game of like developing pilots and not having them sold, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we're, all, we're all doing that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. John, what, John, what's the title of the documentary? What's the title? Uh, what? uh, it's called The Cow in the Sky. The Cow in the Cow Sky. In the sky. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you can look for that, but it's not out yet. We're in the composers working on the score right now. Cool. But, you know, so, and I rep a studio in India called Cosmos Maya, which uh, is a CG studio, uh, you know, that, that does, you know, service work. Uh, you know, I'm winding it down a little bit, winding it down. Not, wow. more, not, not interested in any more full-time jobs, certainly. Wow. You've done so much for the world already. <laughs> yes. You really, you really have, sir. Indeed. Uh, you yeah. deserve all the fun you can get. I'm doing yes. all that stuff you do, you know, I'm writing a novel, you know, it's like, you know, I'm doing that oh. stuff, doing that stuff you eventually get to. You know? <laughs> right. Fantastic. Well, when you get that novel done, please let us know so I can get a copy. I want to get it signed by you. So, we'll yeah. Plug it. We'll yeah, we'll plug, plug it. We'll advertise we'll plug it. it. Yes. All right, yes. good. And you'll yeah. sell, Matt, how many will se- more will he sell? A gazillion. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. It's it's uh, it's and and I have not, but I if, are these archived somewhere where I could. Oh yes, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. yeah. All two hundred. Yes, yeah, send me a link for God's There's sake. a we yeah, have over two hundred twenty episodes oh, full right. of all kinds of wonderful discussion about science fiction, fantasy, horror, animation, toys. You name it. You guys have this rapport that's just unbelievable. You know, <laughs> obviously developed. Over yes. Time. 
Yes, a lot. You, so, yes. So the archive is almost as much as the of the Beatles recording. Uh, let's see, <laughs> 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 wow. hours and hours of it. <laughs> Except no. not quite as friendly. Yeah. No. <laughs> we actually, we actually just we actually just got a report down in this episode. We finally got right. <laughs> finally <laughs> it. In two hundred twenty episodes. That's we'll be right. guys. I don't know about you, but I I want to raise my glass and toast. Let's to, raise our glass. Yes. 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 To uh, John Andrews and to controversial cartoons. Controversial cartoons. <laughs> That's all, folks. Time for a listener shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> shout out. <laughs> all right. I all am right. shout out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this goes out to. Tristan Curtis and Ryan McDougal, the co-hosts of the Finer Points Trivia Cast. Uh Hey, the Finer Points. Who Matt and I were fortunate enough to be invited on. Great guys. Great guys. Fun show. And we had a great time. And it has just posted. It, It is just posted. It's the Finer Points Trivia Cast. And you can find it on iTunes and wherever fine podcasts can be found. Cool. I bet they were honored to have you guys. Well, and we were honored to be on their show because they were such lovely hosts and they made us feel right at home. It got kind of like we get sometimes contentious, (laughs) yeah, but in a really fun way. And they really rolled with it and they were great sports. And uh, I can't say enough great things about them and their show. Yeah, cool. indeed. It was a lot of fun. So so yeah. please check that out. And I've got some shout outs because the third part of our Monster Palooza audio episode Extravaganza. Is, yes, is going to be released only on Patreon. Uh-huh. So that's Ooh. the only way that you can get that third day is to be a, a Patreon patron. And right. so there's a lot of people that we interviewed and talked to who I feel like I want these guys who we interviewed to get a little plug, you know, Hmm, just uh, on a regular episode. Sure. sure. So here we go. I want to do my shout outs to Michael from swarms, Mantiques, and toy trauma in Fremont, California. They're like, Oh, I remember that guy. Yes. (laughs) Yes. I remember that guy. Yeah. Really cool. And I can't wait to go to the store. Um, We got Hunter Wayne, our old friend, Hunter Wayne. Oh yeah. Involved with the resurgence of, Famous Monsters of Filmland. Oh, Ooh, my nice. goodness. And so go to Instagram and follow him, and maybe you'll get more information. Yeah. Uh, we've got David Weiner, our, our lovely David. Uh, Love David. patron, our own patron, yeah. uh, David <laughs> Weiner, who's done so many nice things for us. And, uh, of course, the nicest thing that he's done is give us these documentaries, you yes. know, the In Search oh, of God, yeah. series. And he's right now working on volume three. Of wow. In Search of Darkness. So in we can't wait for that. Too. In Search of Tomorrow. Yeah, mm, about yeah. science fiction. Yeah. Amazing so filmmaker. Just, he's so good. Uh, and then we've got a, a fan, Jamie Dawson, who came by the booth uh, and yes. we chatted with him. Mm-hmm. Great guy. Oh, Jamie, Jamie Dawson. Yes. Jamie Dawson. Yes. Rich Carell and Beth, his wife. Oh, Rich. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Icons yes, of yes. Darkness yes. at yeah. the Hollywood right. Highland Complex. Yeah, which mm-hmm. another thing that I can't wait to go to. I want yes. to, we, we all need to find the time to go and really take it in. And then Bruce Mitchell, right, Larry? Oh, Bruce mm. Mitchell, who worked friend. with Midland. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you can find him at artwithlatex.com. Oh, he's, am- he's cool. amazing. Such yeah. a talent. And I guess he also said that you can find him through Conceptual Executioner. Cool. Which I wasn't quite sure what that meant, but I guess if you put it in, there's there can only be so many conceptual executioners <laughs> online. <laughs> yeah. I know I haven't registered that domain yet. So <laughs> and then we had a guy come by, and I'm sad that we didn't get his name because he came and went, but uh he was dressed as an old character that was very popular, I think in like the 40s and 50s, called Captain Midnight. Do you remember that, James? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Larry, this is an older cool. gentleman. Although Larry wasn't by, I don't think you were at the booth when he came no, by. No, no. But he was dressed in full costume and collector of 16 millimeter films. Yeah, and, he um, liked all the old classic vintage yeah, stuff. Yeah. Really interesting guy. Yeah. And then we've got our old friends, Kerry Christopher. And oh, Christopher. yes. Yes. Uh, wonderful writer and his daughter. 
who uh, just got an AA in, I believe, Japanese language. Yes. Ooh, yes. Man, and nice. she actually, she she does some Japanese some for us. Japanese we asked her to translate. Yeah. yeah. And we're thinking, we may need to bring her to Japan, guys. <laughs> yes, yeah. we do. Yeah. And, and we're sad that his wife, Karen, couldn't make it. But uh, I we'll, know, we'll I know. see her in the future. Yes. yes. And then another listener who was involved with Monster Palooza, Bob Farmer, Oh, who hey, Bob. was with uh, Gino Sabatino and they did the Yoda puppet. Right. Oh, that yes. was Sean. Yeah. Oh my yeah, gosh. James and I watched that. It was amazing. Amazing. It's like, magical. It's, magical. Yeah. It's like he came to life. It really yeah, is. It yeah. was like, you're seeing, you're seeing Yoda again. Yeah. Just Terrific. Your eyes. And then our old friend who he feels like we've known him for ages, but we <laughs> haven't really known him that long, but uh, Michael Mesmer. Oh, yes. Michael Mesmer, oh. professional hypnotist, who writes for Scary Monsters magazine. Scary Monsters magazine has always been such a vocal supporter of our show. Oh yes, yeah, he gave us a nice mention in Scary Monsters. That's magazine. right. Yes, That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. and he's got Great a guy. Uh, he's got a book coming out because he does ghost hunting, and cool. so uh, <laughs> next year he's going to release a book called Ghost Trancer, a hypnotist among spirits. So nice. We mm. Wish him all the best of luck with that. And then yeah. Ted Haynes, of course. Oh, Ted, Ted Haynes. Ted oh, Haynes, gosh. our benefactor, who came by the booth <laughs> and uh, gave us a little special present, which was yes, he did. terrific. Yes, and, yes. Uh, he, he and, built this beautiful life-size Aurora monster model. Uh, model. It's like six and a half feet tall that right. was in the museum. Spectacular. Yeah. Incredible. And, and then it was the talk of the show. And, oh, it was. It, it was, was the yes. most popular thing of the show. And then with him, he brought Gus Navarrete. I'm hoping I'm not mm-hmm. uh, butchering his last name, but uh, this is the guy from Daniel's Digital Sculpture Enlargements who helped him with creating this large scale version of that Frankenstein kit. Nice. So there's, yes. you know, there's a lot of steps that are involved sure. with creating something like that. But uh, I can't even imagine. Yeah, but really <laughs> cool to have all those guys. And then for Larry, we had Paul Watson who came by, who was a big fan of the Dirty Yellow. Yes, I was so <laughs> super, I was so touched. My little student. Super Eight, yes, actually Eight Millimeter, Sean. Oh, eight Millimeter. Right, right. Ah. I was so touched. I was so touched that he came up and goes, oh, "I want to meet the maker of the Dirty Yellow." I'm like, oh my God! Oh. I was so I was so thrilled to to talk to him. We got a great photo of him, and yeah. that was Sweet so guy. fun. Great guy, great guy. Yeah. And uh, and I I didn't really realize that this was Eight Millimeter. So did you have like sound on a cylinder? Like how did you? <laughs> How did that work? <laughs> no, it's it's like anytime you sh- I had to show it to my family or friends, I had a tape player that I pressed right. play. Uh, you know, yeah, of course, you know, it's yeah. not sync sound. Come on, no, no, know, that's how we did kids. it back then. Yeah, yeah. 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 So we should mention the Dirty Yellow is uh, uh, Larry's Monster Party masterpieces on Patreon. Yes, yeah. yeah. one of them. <clears throat> yeah, of them. An, yeah, an animation classic. <laughs> and <laughs> dare I say, controversial. <laughs> you know, yes. uh, 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 you know, Matt is not joking because there's a lot of clay poop and vomit. It, oh, so, it's, yeah. Yeah. it, it is guaranteed to offend everyone. If you if you <laughs> join, if you join our Patreon, you'll see the whole explanation of what I went into mm-hmm. creating it yeah. and everything. So, yeah. And we're working on vomit bags for the experience <laughs> of seeing the film. Ooh. So, yeah, that'll be, be good. good idea, actually. Monster Party yeah, actually, Vomit Bags. That, yeah. yeah. Hey. That's a great uh, idea. Yeah. Oh. something there. Yeah. Uh, out of the mouth uh, of an idiot. Uh, uh, <laughs> idea. Take I wonder if, uh, yeah. I wonder if Vistaprint uh, has that as well. <laughs> yeah. Be taking, take, like taking the, along the lines of Mark of the Devil and Dr. Butcher MD. <laughs> sure. Right. Which vomit bags. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's got to be, we go online, vomit bag, your logo. <laughs> Uh, I, I, you know what? I don't know about yeah. you guys, but I see another free gift at next year's Monster Palooza, man. Yes. Hey, fill, fill the vomit bag. Oh, that's a good idea. Wow. And we could make our own signature chili that we put in the oh, vomit bag. Oh, well, I, I don't know about that. We can have individualized vomit bags, one with Larry's face on it, one with my oh, face. Yeah, my right. face. See which one sells no, the best. No, Sean, I know. No. Everybody's going to want to vomit. Vomit into Larry. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh All my right. gosh. Anyone else, Matt? Yes. Uh, we have uh, fans Robert and Vanessa. 
who came by. Right. And, oh, uh, they Robert know Knesset. who they are. They were great, you know, hardcore horror fans just like us. And I remember them having very good taste in films. So Wally Winger came by and oh. he brought by a very special celebrity, Oscar Ooh. the Grouch. Oh, that's right. Yes, the Oscar the Grouch, or a Oscar the Grouch. (laughs) And and, uh, Oscar was great fun. And then he also brought to our table this up-and-coming voiceover artist named Kayla Cromer. Yes, Uh, yes, very lovely. She was great, and she's doing a thing called Everything's Gonna Be Fine on Freeform, so check that out. Yes. And then we had a guy named Sean Taroli, and he is trying to get a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for oh, James yeah. Whale. That's right. Mm. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Four yeah. power two, man. And isn't that one Indeed. of those things, too, that you thought, I thought this already had happened. Like, like yes. I'm sure. You, yes. You must yeah. Have, yeah, there has to have already been, right? But no, right. there isn't. It's amazing. No. It was shocking. Mm. So but, we yeah. wish yeah. him all the best of luck with that. And uh, there you go. And if I missed anyone, please let me know, and we'll – bring you up the next episode yeah hit us up on our social media yeah yeah but i think that's everybody matt uh, Matt, it was i mean monster palooza was such a great experience and we interviewed so many people there was so much we got so much stuff and and i what you just mentioned these people when they talk to us it's great content and i think if if you join patreon you're gonna love this yeah i mean it really is and it's and then we're there too and we're fun right we're a good time i think so yeah i mean and and i thought we were in prime form on yeah. that Sunday. We had, lot, we had a lot of table traffic. I'm telling we you. Did. We yes. were really yeah. happy in yeah. the booth. But I will say <laughs> I will say this. If if you join Patreon and you listen to this episode, you're gonna hear my voice kind of give away. I, I mean <laughs> that's it, true. I yes. think I I Larry, did I, I kind of towards the end, well, man. You were, it was, you were, I mean, look, you were you were talking up a storm as we I, all were, but you were like, I mean, you were out there and, and in front, and yeah, by, by day three, it was I like c- Sean, <laughs> I couldn't even get I couldn't even get to our clothes. Do you remember? My voice yeah. like, ah! But it was it was it was kind of cute. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was adorable. Like, it was like meeting a very young adolescent Larry Stroth. <laughs> <laughs> well, all this, all this. Where are uh, you going to, young man? <laughs> all this content on Patreon. What is what is this Patreon? Yeah, what the all hell is Patreon? Oh, <laughs> Patreon. No, oh, sometimes even I forget, but, <laughs> but I just remember. Anyway, Patreon is this platform where when you join it, you are allowed access to bonus material from Ooh. Monster Party. Ooh. Now, this material could be. Things like uh, bonus audio episodes or uh, special shows that we produce, like Monster Party Masterpieces <coughs> or oh, Larry's yes. Toy Time. Oh, uh, yes. Ooh, Classic. Great, great shows. And uh, my stepfather-in-law puts together these volumes of all these different short stories. And uh, yes. they're a lot of fun. So we'll provide you with stuff like that. And then, oh, uh, last but not least, we also have this ongoing series of Let's just say they're travel logs for the ultimate geek. Yeah. <laughs> where we go through Japan and we chronicle pretty much every minute that we're there. Oh, and, yeah. and I think over all the editions that we put out, it's kind of like being there. It feels like that, at least to me. Yeah. It's been mm. such a joy to yeah. watch. I'll when watching you. it, I feel like I'm right there again. This has been buried in the vaults for seven years, and we haven't even looked at this stuff until yeah. now. And this footage that James has been editing and putting together, my gosh, we haven't seen it in such a, a long time. The most recent one nearly brought tears to my eyes because it was such a joyous, wonderful experience. And, and just watching it and reliving it which just was just awesome. It's and, just like surreal. It's like, did we really yeah. do all that? Like, I know. Yeah, yeah. Sean, it's totally. getting to that point where it's like, wow. Hey, Sean, did you feel like you were reliving it? Yeah, but more. It's almost like it was like another life or something. It's really yeah, weird. Well, I know what you mean. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It really yeah. does feel like that. And what's great about this one is that we go to that great bar. Godzilla yes. Yacht, which is that's a store and a bar. It's a, to- and- it's a Japanese toy store. And below is an accompanying bar. Yes. So what more could you want? I know, right? <laughs> it's perfect. The, what a packed day that was. Where part yeah. you know, it was day six, part one was we visited Toho Studios. Part two was we visited Ultraman Town. Yeah. Part three was the robot restaurant and Godzilla in Hotel in Shinjuku. <laughs> yeah. And then we capped the day with this 
last this amazing bar yeah of uh, godzilla ya yeah, store and bar <laughs> what an amazing day and yeah. what's so cool is when james and i were filming we we filmed so much action in the bar and i didn't realize it that the conversations we talked about having these conversations with people who didn't speak english <laughs> and were communicating with monster songs and monster <laughs> names and it was <laughs> just watching yeah. it was just wonderful I know if only all of Japan were like that, where you walk into a place and you go, Gamera? Like, oh, Gamera! <laughs> if, only well, the know, whole, if only the whole world, if only the whole world were like that, where we yes. could all just, you know, come together over monster songs. <laughs> yeah, True. Yeah. But that was, yeah, that was a really good time. So yeah, you're gonna wanna join Patreon and become a monster party patron, and <clears throat> you'll have access to all this glory. Well, you know, it, it sounds too good to be true, but in these days, inflation it being is. what it is and prices going and prices going up through the roof on everything, sure. uh, it, it sounds like it's going to be, I, I hate to say it, but kind of unaffordable. You know, the world is a messy place right now, <laughs> <laughs> yes, but not in our world, because right. in our world, there's a safe haven where this pathway to Patreon is still only $5 a month. What? Still? No. Five yes. bucks? Yes. Wait, wait, wait a minute. You can't get an Acme Anvil for that price. <laughs> <laughs> you know wow. what? It, it's funny you should discount that, Sean, because I've been looking up <laughs> Anvil prices and they're skyrocketing. <laughs> yeah, especially the ones that you drop on people. Just think, mm. isn't, it, isn't it weird how popular the anvil was? It was really big. Back <laughs> yeah. then. Uh, it was everywhere. It was yeah. anvils. I, I, I never would have known what an anvil was. Of course not. Yeah, if it know, wasn't for right? me, yeah. 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 And then even when I saw them, they were kind of underwhelming. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Not that's an anvil. <laughs> they're supposed to be as big as me. <laughs> right. So when they're dropped so, on me, I disappear under it with only a couple, right. like a leg and a finger yeah, sticking out. Yeah. <laughs> but it's only five bucks. Five bucks. Yeah. That's five that's bucks. Cool. All you got to do is go to patreon.com, go to Monster Party, click join, follow the instructions. And yeah, it's a party. It's an audio, visual, even taste party. <laughs> At some point, we have to do a special monster party pizza rolls or something like that, don't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Finger we food. need we need food to be the next merch. Yeah, I think. food. Yeah, uh, yeah Italian. I brought up I brought up the chili, but no. maybe something no corn something. corn dogs. No, you know, <laughs> something okay. simple and basic. Though. Let's put this on yeah. the back burner. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. But get, the, get the vomit bag first, then we'll do the. All right, then we'll figure yeah. out what we're going to fill it with. What delicious thing we're going to fill it with? Priority. <laughs> but uh, speaking of merch, you know, if you've listened uh-huh. to our last last couple of uh, shows from Monster Palooza, listeners are have uh, gotten hints that there might be some new Monster Party merch available on our eBay store. That's you right. don't say. And guys, let's let's make it official. Let's pull the trigger. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Here we go. Monster Party merch. New merch. Fresh, fresh Monster Party merch. Is Piping now. hot. Yeah. And finally, finally available. What? James, what um, do we got? Oh my God. Oh, wh- where do I start? <laughs> start well, at the we beginning. Have the, well, we have the, monster, the new Monster Party Monster Palooza exclusive t shirt. <gasps> wow. What? That is Ooh. finally now available. Wait a minute. So, what you're saying is. That- <laughs> Our listeners can get a Monster Palooza exclusive yeah. shirt. This and is a this, new. This is the kaiju design, right? With the classic Derek kaiju design. New color design. scheme. New design new color by scheme. Derek Robertson. Derek Robertson but, designed it. The kaiju design with a new color scheme. Uh, and the last one we did was red, and this one is green. That's beautiful. Wow. That's, beautiful. That's, that's, that's clever. That's gorgeous. That's pretty clever. Classic green. Classic <laughs> green. And available in every size, right? What? About. Whoa. Whoa. Every size. Yeah. Oh my we're, gosh. We're, we're light on any kind of um, female size because those didn't really move too well last time. We might have mm-hmm. a couple of those left in the red scheme, but yeah. But also, the females females can wear the 
Regular Absolutely. Females. Oh, oh, females. Yeah. females. Yeah. females. Yeah. Any type of thing. My, yeah. my, That's my one da- right that has not been stolen from them. My daughter, my daughter and her friends all had a yeah. medium shirt. Yes. They all the had w- a medium. The women one. folk can wear it. <laughs> yeah. so they can works. do that thing where they, you know, tie it in a little knot, you know? Sure. Yeah. They can do whatever like, they want. Like the Chrissy McNichol. So you got, the, so yeah. you got the shirts, James. Chrissy McNichol, wow. James, you got, you the, got shirts. the shirts. What else do you got? got? The shirts and something very exciting and new at this show: what? Monster Party shot glasses. Shot right. glasses. Oh, yes. oh, yes. oh your favorite wow. booze. High quality barware. Yes. That's right. Finally, That's... Monster Party barware. Yeah. Come well, on. yeah, but I mean, it's a shot glass, sure. But yeah, you could also put your loose change sure. as long as you don't have sure. a lot of it. You could put that in there. You could put maybe your your contact lenses when you lose the case. You could put them in there. there. You go. Uh, your your cufflinks. You know how you're <laughs> always losing your cufflinks. Yeah, put them in there. <laughs> You'll find them in there. Put your pennies in there. You know. Put your pennies, or, or just drink booze from it, or booze. <laughs> There's that. Yeah. yeah, dipping sauces. Yes, <laughs> sure, sure. A very small amount of milk. Maybe you're yeah. lactose intolerant. But when you we still toast, like that real milk. At the you end, can buy, of you can buy three milk. of them. You can buy three of them. Play the find the red ball game. You know, you yes. put them upside down. Yeah. And it would be great around. because then people could see through it and find out what it is. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> well, yeah, yeah. yeah. it will be very popular. Yeah, that's Look, great. Uh, you guys, can we win every of, time. At the yeah. end of every episode, what are you trying to say, toast, James? <laughs> we toast our guests at the end of every episode. Wouldn't it be great to toast along with us with a monster party? Oh, shot that's right. Yes. Like that. Or yeah. two or three or four. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, and then, as if all that weren't enough. Wait, there's more? Believe it or not, there's more. After, after a, a prolonged absence of stock, we now finally have back in stock the monster part the legendary monster party cap yes oh, yes with the one, with, high one with, three, with 10 stitches no no with it's 16000 it's no it's 16000 stitch james 60 billion hey, no, stitches you know what we need we need a contest where it's like you know guess how many jelly beans are in the jar <laughs> yeah guess how many stitches guess how many stitches it's 16000 <laughs> stitches it's a Thanks. high quality Thanks, cap. Larry. Sixteen thousand, but look after after fifteen thousand, you lose count. It might as well be ten billion, right? <laughs> What's the difference? And it's is very high quality item. It's breathable. Yes, it's a beautiful beautiful it item. It's it gorgeous. Is. And last but not least, the ever popular Monster Party cloth PPE face mask. Yes, oh, yeah. so popular. Oh, love it. Another beautiful item with a Monster nicely Party made. Classic logo, nicely made. Less stitches. Multi-purpose. <laughs> yeah. 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 You can use it for anything. You really can. Yeah. And when you're done using it, you could get a bunch of them and sew them together to make a quilt. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. It just keeps, there's the nothing stuff. you can't do with this mask, mm-hmm. except protect yourself from COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Now, we've been very happy and very proud to be able to offer merch on our eBay store, which is Monster Party Store. Easy to remember. Yeah. We've been uh, very proud to be able to offer it with free shipping. But times being what they are, unfortunately, we've had to backpedal a little bit on that. So now there will be a nominal, very nominal shipping yes. charge. Yes. Reasonable. Yeah. Reasonable. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, it shouldn't be more than, you know, like around $5 or something like that for, yeah. And it'll be, you know, um, a sliding scale when depending on the item. So, right, 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 right. And as always, if you happen to be a Patreon member, we will throw in free goodies. True. Free goodies uh, with no extra shipping. No. Free goodies courtesy of Jason Lindsay and Biff Bang Pow Toys Aww. and uh, the aforementioned Ted Haynes, a friend of the show, creature creator extraordinaire. That's right. So lots of goodies in your box. And man, I mean, how much fun are we really? Oh, <laughs> all the it things we ex- offer. Such an exciting time to be a monster party fan. It is. It really yeah. is. I'm excited. <laughs> Sean, are you excited? I'm extremely excited right now. Very? <laughs> I'm very excited. I just don't I... want to talk over you. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. 
And hey, let's remind everybody that we are on the social media like all the kids today. We are on <laughs> the social the, media. We are on <laughs> Facebook at Monster Party TV. Uh, YouTube streaming for free. At the YouTube. Monster, the YouTube. The, YouTube at, the right. Monster Party TV, our YouTube channel. And the Twitter at Monster Party HQ, our Twitter handle, and the Instagram Monster Party HQ as well. So please check us out there. Follow us, friend us, uh, send us messages. And speaking of messages, wherever you're listening to us, take a moment, write us a review, let us know your thoughts and your dreams and your wishes and your <laughs> suggestions. And we will read it on the air because we would love to hear your thoughts and share them. Yes. Right. And once we read them on the air, that review will be controversial. <laughs> Ooh, tying it in. On that note, I am Matt Weinhold. I'm Sean Sheridan. I'm Larry Stroth. And I'm James Gonis. Keep America strong! And watch controversial cartoons. Right, Monster Holio? I need Monster Party for my bunghole! <laughs> That's Sean. Hey, hey John. Sean Sheridan. That's How's James Gonis. James, uh, I appreciate howdy. the T-shirt. Oh yeah, I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm a big fan. <laughs> what are they doing? Yeah, uh, Larry is Sorry? still to come, but uh, and then okay. I swear no more hosts. Okay, because right now we got like a you know four quadrants. <laughs> yeah, no, it's gonna, he's going to uh, screw it all up. So just yeah, here we go. Ready? <laughs> here he comes. Okay, put him in the middle. Can you do that? <laughs> I don't know how to work anything. <laughs> control I'm situation. in my 50s. I don't know how anything works. <laughs> Speaking of in his 50s. Hi, Larry. Hi, guys. I'm 50. <laughs> uh, are you now? A, that's a no. long ago place I vaguely remember. Oh, oh wow. come on now, John. Come on. All it's right. been great. I, considering what's happened since I turned 50. Yeah. Woo. What a good time. <laughs> you made that sound like it almost was contingent on you. You're turning 50. I, I, you know what? I am taking the blame for everything. I think <laughs> somehow me turning 50 turned the whole world to shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of ego I have. Wow. Wow. I know. So John, John, do you do you hail from uh, Rhode Island? Uh, no, I'm from New Jersey. Okay. I was just I was just one of those folks that go, you know, swam against the tide upstream to uh to to the <coughs> farther into the northeast to go to college, you know. Ah. Yeah. Cuz um cuz I I when I was a kid I grew up in uh, Massachusetts and I I never had a horror host but there was a, a station out of Rhode Island that showed these Saturday night double features of horror movies. And oh. I was just wondering if, if, cause like I'm looking for people who can remember that experience, you know. So there was no host. host. There was no host. Was there a oh, there voice, no like host. a voiceover or anything? N not even. There was a montage of oh. um, monster movie clips, Universal monster movie clips. Right, right. Yeah, there was some like that, or is just that's hey, John, all. Was. John, isn't this great? This is just a taste of the excitement you're about to yeah. enter into. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. Vague conversations but, but, about things we might have seen or remembered. <laughs> By the way, I recently got to play Ernie Anderson in oh a my God. film. You know who that is? Oh, Three. fuck yeah. Yeah. Well, um, Gulardi. Uh, Gulardi? Yep, exactly. Wow. You know, it made me think of Gulardi. <clears throat> And uh, wow. I, I found all these wonderful Goulardi clips and then all these wonderful Ernie Anderson with Tim Conway clips. Oh, wow. Uh, That's wow. cool. Prep. But uh, a, young, <clears throat> a young guy, a uh, uh, film school student, was just took it on his own. He decided he was going to do uh, a series of the life of Paul Thomas Anderson. And, and uh, in the wow. pilot, I play Ernie. Wow. Wow. wow! wow! He, he well, also I, went I, on to do the uh, the voiceover guy for like ABC. He was always like the Love Boat. The so Love. Was, he, yeah, he was. Yeah. That was him. He was like, well, next, I mean, I spent the, the Love Boat. I spent the whole week trying to keep my voice down low. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, he, that's a Love Boat. Ernie that's Anderson cool. was kind of like the Lenny Bruce of horror hosts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. 
Yeah. yeah. He, he, uh, he took chances. Everybody kind of sort of followed his lead uh, after that, it seemed. Being a little iconoclastic, yet still trying to, you know, maintain that place. And uh, he was a beat family, was a not beatnik. family <clears throat> chewing. Yeah, right? he was the beatnik whore host. <clears throat> You yeah, know, really I think when he started, host. there were beatniks, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it was the late fifties or early sixties. I'm not sure exactly which. There are a couple left. Uh, yeah, I think sixties. Yeah. Couple yeah. black turtlenecks out there, you know, playing yeah. the bongos. Yeah. Oh <clears throat> boy, I miss those days. That, that's, no, that's that's not right. That's no, no what, what's not right, Larry? By the no. way, that's Larry Stroth. Beat, beatnik horror. Hey man. Well, so dude, you, so you don't like Goulardi? <laughs> you don't no, like or, hey, or hey, Larry, you know, Larry, answer the question. You don't like Goulardi. Not my favorite. Have you ever okay. what? Really? Yeah. Oh my hey, God. hey, what hey, a, hey. A am I, am I not, you? not allowed to have my have you been, re- have you been like replaced? Something? Have you been replaced by a robot double? What a Larry square. <laughs> Goulardi's hey. not a favorite of yours. Wow. wow okay. No, hey, no, Sean. He's is, not. What about Nick? Nick Can you hear me? The beatnik culture and all that. You don't like that either? How about, how about the Lawrence Welk? That guy was pretty, <laughs> you know, he was pretty fun, right? He had bubbles. Okay. You know, so, there we go. Robot that's monster. it. doesn't make it great. So, John, that's, that's pretty much a, a little snapshot of the real actual show. Okay. <laughs> no, a bunch of yelling. No, no, Every no, once in no, a while, no, you will no, be able no. to say something. That's no, that's not the way it works, though, because, you know, well, we, and that's another thing that he's going to do, by the way, is anything I say, he's going to go. No, no, because <laughs> well, I, I, anything I did you want say. to mention, I did want to mention, Matt, that Larry seems to have papers. Oh, 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 yes, oh, yes. Hey, some hey. people did their work. Yeah, hey. Some people, some people hey, did. Hello, hey, hello. Larry, like I always Larry, have written down. I have yes, my so. notes on my computer. How about that? Go, hey, Grandpa. Oh, you're one of you, you know, like, look you know you get, hey, you get John, no, no. Yeah, hey, John, John, no, write so John, down some notes. So, John, I can, I can see, you know, you've got, you've got the little white tip here. You've been around. Do you, yeah. do you, Jesus like, Christ. you go, if you go into, a, <laughs> you go into a meeting and you've got your notepad of paper and you're ready to go. And then some fucking young clown comes in with his little laptop thing and goes, Oh, I'm ready. Do-do-do-do. I've got my notes right here. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, I, I've been using this. I've been using this for years. And we, know that. we know that. We know that. That's clear. Yeah. I'm still that. using school notebooks, you know. That oh. I, 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 this I is a man I like. Composition. Closet many years ago. You know? <laughs> but see, I, if I remember correctly, Larry, you were the one uh, who started the Lashing Out Festival that we've done so far. What do you mean? <laughs> By not liking Goulardi. <laughs> what? what? So, so when have you, so it's like, if you come across, oh, Jaws, oh, I like, I don't like that. It's like, oh, jump on him because he doesn't like Jaws. It's, it's like, That's correct. hey, yes. it, it's a, <laughs> sometimes we come up on, upon something that one of us may not be I a know. fan of. Hey, is anyone here a big fan of Groovy Ghoulies? Anyone? Anyone? Oh, here huh? we go yes. again. All right. Oh, see, Sean likes it. Sean, I Fucking I dare like you. It. I like it I, a little no, tiny bit. No, I, I, I good I, thing this doesn't sound like a broken record or anything. Yeah, no, I've no, never this before. I dare you to sit and watch one episode after the another after another after another. I will another. do that. I will I, 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 I dare I'm, you. Nobody does the thing that. is what Sean, are you really high when you're watching no, it? Whoa. No. So oh, it's controversial cartoons. I've I mean, I, uh, frankly, not stupid, it, not stupid I mean, cartoons. I know I got the Gullardi thing going, but I, to me, when, what, I, what I found that was available, it's the it's the stuff where he plays straight man to Tim Conway. That's really good. Uh, that's the best straight man is the funny straight man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. it's what Dean Martin did. It's right. Uh, that's what Larry up, does uh, for me. I grew up on Zachary. <laughs> that was my heart. Oh, uh, yeah. Of course. Okay. Yeah. yeah, sure, sure. <clears throat> you don't like him either? No, did, did I say that? No, I'm asking. Did I say that? Zachary was asking. the number one. No. He started it all, really. Him yeah. and uh, Vampira. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I like yeah. I like how it's spook. You know, the spooky stuff. You like the but, makeup and the. But no, no, not necessarily because you know, John, uh, Matt, and I, we had in Northern California, we had creature features with Bob Wilkins and John Stanley. These are like you know, kind of dry guys with, you know, glasses. They didn't dress up with makeup. Or it, they had an interesting set behind, but they basically tell you what the movie is. And typically their their thing was this movie's not good. You really shouldn't watch it. And then they try to bring guests on, you know, throughout. And But it was something as a kid I just I just loved. And, and um, 
Yeah. So, but well, I so do like a, all it was flavors. A call, it, was a call, it was a call to watch, really, when that, that they said. Uh, sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 See, he's hurts. been around. He's He knows Stop the Stop saying he's been around. But, well, I... What? What, what? What? Like he's yeah. what? He's new to the industry. What are, what? You gonna, are you going to help him get up the stairs next? What the fuck? <laughs> Jesus! I didn't say that. Hey, didn't... John, do you need to go before he's we still... start? How are you I doing? Still get around. I still get around. I By do. the All way, right. John, before we get started, just to let you know, you know, we're not live. So if for some That's reason, true. as we're talking and you go, oh, guys, I need to run to the restroom for a moment because we all kind of have to every once in a while. Sure. We stop, you know, go do our thing, come back, and then Matt will continue on as if nothing ever happened. Or if you say something like, and then I met Walt Disney and he was a dick. And, oh, I shouldn't have said that. If you say something that you feel you shouldn't have said, no problem. Matt will edit it out. We'll just go back and go, okay, go back and you go, oh, D- Walt Disney was great. I loved him, you know, whatever. I'll, I'll cut it out. I'll cut I, it out with my computer scissors. Now that I know this, I want to go change out of my depends because you know, <laughs> that's the therapy. They are, you know what? They are kind of freeing, aren't they? Where you can yeah, just exactly. go. Let go. Yeah. 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 I feel like Neil Armstrong, Neil Armstrong on the, on the, on the moon. Right. Yeah. You're an astronaut in your own home. Um, okay. Uh, before we start this, uh, we usually take this crazy banter that we do before the show and we put it at the end as like a little bonus thing. You're, you're cool with that, right? Oh, do what the hell you are. There we go. That's all we need. Right. And so Larry, why don't you run him through what's about to happen? Well, just to let you know, uh, John, I'm, I don't know if you've listened to the show before, but what we do is as we start, Matt starts using his little creepy voice it kind of introduces the show. We introduce ourselves. We say what the topic is, and then we introduce our guest, and then we go to town. Okay? okay. So if you could just hang out, you know, don't say anything until we get, you know, give a, the big roaring, inter, you know, introduction. And, and Matt, I take it you're giving the introduction, sir? I will be, yes. And, you know. If you yeah. say one more word uh, about. No. No, nope. my intro. No, so about so, that I have to introduce I, this as a I, carnival I, barker. No, did I say something? <laughs> uh, but but so so John, um, and once we get started, you know, yeah. we're going to town, and I'm and I'm sure we'd all love. Remember, our listeners, not everyone uh, is an expert at at the stuff that we sometimes talk about. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I I'm hoping we can go into how you got into animation and how you were, sure. yeah. You know, I was checking for pesto because I had made some uh, homemade pesto for dinner. So I, it I looks just, delicious. I was just bringing myself full screen so I could, you know, check. You look, uh, you, you look beautiful. I, I'm telling you, you, you're like, it's timeless, you know, it's like Dorian Gray. <laughs> and <laughs> the gray part is definitely true. <laughs> <laughs> and Johnny knows that you worked at class B Chupo. I did indeed. 13 years. Yeah. Did you work with Mark Risley? Uh, I knew Mark a little bit. Yeah, I didn't work directly with him, but um, he was, I think he was on uh, like the, uh, uh, what were those people that rode around in the desert? Rug- in San Diego? Oh, the Thornberries? Thornberries. Was he on that? Yeah. Or was he at- yes, yeah. he, he was. He did uh, Rugrats, Thornberry. I'm working with him now. Oh, no kidding. Where, and where and it, I'm sorry? Where is he? he uh, you mean like what studio? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's uh, Windy Tail Studios. It's this is our first animated feature that we're doing, oh. and uh, Mark is the director, and and he's just he's fabulous. He's absolutely wonderful. Such a joy Ooh. to work with. And um, he's a San Diego guy, I think. I remember. He is a San Diego yeah. guy, but he has a place here, and uh, and so we've got him here. So we're we're very excited to have him. Very cool. Um, yeah, yeah. All right, but, I'm, uh, yeah. I'm trying to wind down into a very quiet mode until I like until- it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think everybody knows what everybody's supposed to do. So maybe I'll just start this. What do you think? Sounds good. Awesome. So so we're gonna go into like John's career a little bit and get into Beavis uh, and Butthead. Be- yeah, yes, I was. If you let me get to it, I get what, get I'm to Beavis and Butthead. Too. No, I know, but I felt you're trying to like ah, ah you know. Uh, but, but it's like Beavis and Butthead. Then we you're can get into our whole. Today, sir. Yes, uh, we will. We will also be talking about Beavis and Butthead. Yes, his career. Anything else you'd like to structure before we start? <laughs> and and then we can go into several uh, controversial cartoons. Thank you. Yes, you can, is that, is that, that, can I is fax accept, you the list? Is that acceptable to you? <laughs> Shall I just leave for a while? And, and no, 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 <laughs> yeah. no, 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 no. All right, no. here we go. Here we go.
That was great. I, I'm going to take really a quick good. bathroom break. Okay. okay. <clears throat> yeah, I will too. I'm going to stay here and I'm going to look at Matt. I want to go, but I'm afraid what will happen if I go. What will happen? Oh, you, you think I'm going to start talking? All right. Just... I'm going to go. Now I you, go. I go. You, you behave. Okay. I won't say anything. I'm not saying not to say anything. Okay. All right. Here I go. I see you. I see you. I knew you were going to turn. I knew you were going to look. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Monster Party. My name is Larry Stroth, and I'll be your host tonight while my co-hosts are taking leave of absence. Tonight, we're going to have a different kind of discussion, something that's a little more civil, soft, gentle, but yet we're going to get down to the core of the issue. Thanks for listening. You know, we just got back from Monster Palooza. It took me like two weeks to recover. I didn't realize how much work I, you know, was involved. <sighs> I'm not as you know, as uh, young as I used to be. And and hey, hey, hey. See, I have I have this thing handy, but I don't want to bust <laughs> it out. Like I don't know what you guys can hear. You know, I mean, it's like oh, no one will hear. No one will hear it. No, first of all, open. No, 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 no. Open the top oh, no. first. Open the top. Oh, no. You, you, you no. mean like uh, you're saying you were going to do that during the podcast? Yes, I've done it. If we're, if if it came down to it. What the fuck? Oh, my explode, God. If Can't my you just take, ready to say, excuse me, I'm going to take a. No, I don't want to stop God. the mo. I don't want to stop the feel, the motion going here. <laughs> Momentum. Wow. 